Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Weeb Club, uh, weekly number 14, I think. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, we're here. Indy's uh, back. Yeah, I'm back. I've moved. Um, I still have that Space Jam cereal in my pantry. I had a bowl of it this morning, but it's been <laughs> been working through it slow. Got to savor, you know, LeBron James. Um, uh, it was fun to work what you recorded into the episode because, like, like I especially, like, because I would, like, bring up things related to the clips I was about to show. But then, like, like early on in the episode, I mentioned cereal. And what's, like, cereal? I'm like, cereal. And then I, I post the clip. And, like, I just, I don't know. I thought it was funny that he was confused. Yeah, and um, it worked out well for you because I, I filmed it in, like, three different segments just, like, without even – just, like, because that's how it ended up working out. And um, it was just funny that, well, like, I did that, and then it ended up being, like, perfectly, like, um, <laughs> you were able to fit him into the episode. Yeah. Uh, it was yeah it was like you know just enough to not be like weird that it just happened once or twice but then it was uh not too too many i think so i think it worked out uh but anyway um yes yeah, so i guess Vindy, yeah, yeah Vindy, to address wanna... the uh the elephant in the room uh so what the what's not here this week he um he, he wants to take a break he, he's been having some mental health issues just uh it's just you know the internet sometimes can be a lot for people um so he just he wants to take a break for a little bit for his mental health um he'll be back uh can't say it'll be you know he's not it's i don't think it'll be like a one week thing he's taking a little bit of a break for himself um so you know if you guys could uh show him some support in the comments i think he would uh, appreciate that a lot um yeah and so outside of that i think on the comments i don't really care about that many of the comments to be honest. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but i will read one just because who is this man claiming to be vindy he doesn't have a red headband. Imposter. It was in a Pepper. box. I said that hmm. in the video. The Vindy is sus. Oh my god. I also <laughs> like how it, it coincides with a thumbnail because I forgot to put your hair on that rat, but you happen to not be wearing your headband anyway, so it kind of worked. There's a rat in that thumbnail? Yeah. Oh yeah, I see it. I see the one in now. Funny. Uh, uh so real quick so tanya had a comment about um high guardian spice uh one thing she said was just like people are you know judging it before it, it comes out which i you know agree with like i don't know uh, it's just a trailer um though i will say because at the end she's like oh people are accepting uh thunderbolt fantasy and panty and stocking as anime and i'm just like what i mean yeah that's kind of well like because panty and stocking <laughs> is literally made by studio guy it was made by gynax by staff that would move on to trigger like it's yeah it's in, influenced from western cartoons but it's still anime just like stuff like avatar or yeah high guardian spice or she or steven universe is influenced from anime but it's still western animation right and thunderbolt fantasy is to i would consider that toku it's uh, tokusatsu i would consider it anime I, I, Sesame I think it's Street, a style... Sesame Street a cartoon? No, but uh, I think Thunderbolt fan... I mean, I guess, it, yeah, you could say it's toku. It's, uh, I mean, it, it depends on if you if you classify it as a type of animation or not. Um, I mean, puppetry is animation, but I don't think we talk about puppetry. Like, puppetry isn't animation in the same sense of... Like, here's here's the difference. A pu puppeting movement, movement is animated in the same way a human body being moved by muscles is animated. Um, and anime is a bunch of still images may or cartoons like is it's still images moving to uh it, they're like the images aren't literally moving but it's more about creating right. the illusion of movement right that makes sense um, so in that sense like thunderbolt that's, fantasy actually that's that's a yeah. really fair point because like stop motion is still anime because it's 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 it's, it's a bunch of uh non-moving pieces yes. put together to simulate yeah. movement whereas with thunderbolt fantasy it's like the dolls like the puppets are actually moving so yeah, right. I, I'd agree with highlighted that. with special effects, which is where I consider it tokusatsu, just because it's more, it's closer to 
uh, right, like Shokugeki Goraigon or right. those kind of, right, even like shows with live action actors, right? And, and here's the um, other thing to think about when it comes to uh, Thunderbolt Fantasy as well, is that's not a fair comparison because it's made in Japan. <laughs> like, if you right. really wanted to bring up something like that you could use as a fair point, bring up like Chinese uh, cartoons that very much look like and are inspired by yeah, anime, Chinese, right? Some people yeah, consider Korean cartoons anime or yeah, Korean cartoons. Like, those are much right. more fair, like, this is a kind of rides the line, and some people consider this, but won't consider High Guardian Spice. But Thunderbolt Fantasy and, and, and Panty and Stalking were made in Japan. There's no comparison between that and High Guardian Spice. Right. They like, could even try even bringing when, up like Korra because, like, you know, it is animated like in Korea in part. I'm pretty sure. Oh no, like yeah, that. that's and that's been the case for a lot of Western animation as well, where they outsource uh, the in between stuff to Asian, you know, groups. Uh, it's like fucking TMS. Studios back in the '90s did animation for Batman the Animated Series and Ducktales. Like, oh uh, shit, Ducktales is anime, <laughs> right? Even though, like, yeah, the writing, the producing, the keyframing, and the keyframe animation was done, you know, by you know American studios. It was outsourced, and so right, so you know, like same with Korra, right? So it's, but it's like, yeah, it, it is a, you know, it's and it's a process that is becoming more international. Uh, so I'm definitely fine with the, the conversation continuing, but I, like that's where I stand, right? Okay, Panty and Stocking, made for Japanese audiences by a Japanese studio. Uh, you know, Thunderbolt Fantasy, like it, you know, it's effects work and to- and puppetry, right? So, right. Uh, you know, even though yeah, I've I've seen people, uh, you know, call Thunderbolt Fantasy Thunderbolt Fantasy anime, um, but I've also heard uh, like there's a, a an article I'll try to remember to link on Tofugu that mentions that in casual conversations, some people in Japan will call Tokusatsu anime. And that kind of makes sense, even though, like, it's not animation, but just, like, the tone and sort of, like, aesthetic or the char- the ways that characters act, right? Like, I can understand yeah. why someone would, like, make the association even if I don't consider it anime, right? So It's definitely, uh, right. like, the closest thing you'll have to a good live-action, like, anime series. Yeah, I just, that's, yeah, I even described it as live action anime in my tokusatsu, like, how to watch, how to get into it video, because, like, I got, I, the clip I used was of a Lupin Ray versus Pat Ranger, where something weird happened, and the, the character goes, eh, and that's, like, anime as fuck, right? <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, right. so another one is, uh, Hobart corrected me that, uh, Lucifer and the Misk Hammer was actually a subtitle by, uh, the author. Um, I didn't know that because I, I, my, all my information came on my end list where it's like, you know, it's just the alternate titles and it just said Hoshino Samadara. So I went, okay, that's the official title and everything. I guess the fans just made something up. So that was my assumption. I was wrong. Uh, wow, Craftsdorf. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not bringing up any. I wasn't here. Um, uh, and then do you want to talk about the one comment on the, uh, the professing Pokemon? <laughs> I don't know why more people don't watch it. I don't know why more people don't watch it. It's not in Craft Store. It's everyone's favorite Weeb Club member. It's a series that people aren't reading, so it makes sense. Yeah, well, I also just think, like, I mean, maybe because I like recording them, but also it is, like, the lowest energy stuff on the Weeb Club, which is just, like, because it's true. It is, yeah, when it's y'all two, it's very much just y'all chilling, just chatting. And I think it's like a Discord call. Like, and compared to, like, the Sonic podcast, like, I don't think anything we've talked about has been, like, something we're super into. Like, none. What's the highest rating you've given on Professing Pokemon? <laughs> like, maybe Stand uh, By Me, which you gave, I like, a 7? Think... No, I didn't give Stand By Me a 7. What the heck oh. are you talking about? I don't know. The, I think the <laughs> highest rating is a 6, I think. Actually, no, maybe it is a 7 with Kamen Rider. I think I gave okay. Kamen Rider I a 7. You... Okay, I thought you gave Kamen Rider a 6, uh... Krausdorf <laughs> got those uh, two switched I mean, up, check. I guess. Because I gave Stand by Me like an eight. I like that. Movie. Oh no, I did give Tom um, Ryder a six. <laughs> okay, so the and highest I, yeah. rating is a six. Okay, yes, yeah, so you're right. So nothing you've been into, and aside from Stand by Me, n- like yeah, I like Dragon Quest. I gave it a six. Uh, Kamen Rider was cool, but like nothing I've really liked either. Aside after Stand by Me, so it's like. I feel like in order to get our energy up, it has to be something we're both really into, and I don't know when that's gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe when you play so, Red and Blue, but probably when you play. I mean, Golden I Hour. do really like Earthbound. So yeah, I think oh, that's right. Mother, you are playing Earthbound yeah, and Dragon Quest Five. Yes, those are the two I think we're gonna most enjoy. Um, the Shin, the Megami. I almost I always say Shin Megami Tensei because, right. because my but it's it's just Megami Megami Tensei. Um, and I think 
we're gonna be have energy on that one, but for the wrong reasons. Yeah, offline was telling me. <laughs> offline was telling me some horror stories about Megami um, Tensei One. He gave so that, good yeah, he, luck. He's been playing a bunch of old JRPGs, and he gave it like a fucking two. Oh like, yeah, he, no, I, I was a voice with him. He was telling me about how I think none was there too. He was telling us about how bad it was, and like all the bullshit you have to deal with. It's like, yeah, ah, good luck. I can't on that even one. remember what I can't even remember what he said because it's too traumatic for me. <laughs> something no. about like if you want to like do fusions you have to walk all the way back to like the starting area of the game yeah. or something oh 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 and the Look. worst part is i don't even know if that's gonna be the hardest thing for none to get to because i don't need to rewatch ultra seven <laughs> but none has to watch 47 episodes of stinky toku uh ew so yeah. oh. cringe I agree. Thank you. See, now that you're the only Toku watcher here, me and Vindy can bully you. Let's go. What's this gone? Is a toku free podcast. <laughs> I just imagine that image of like the soldier, like <laughs> depending on like there's there's like bullets and shit flying at him, and it's like uh, Vindy and Nun's Toku abuse, and like what the what is the guy taking the bullets, and I'm on the bed, uh, <laughs> and now he's gone. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um. But no, I don't want to respond to the one comment. Sorry, uh, Mateus. Uh, well, and and Crash Vindy will be out. Eric MC had a comment there, but he deleted it. It basically said something like, "Because he saw Ava in the title, it made him not want to watch it." Oh, he did see. Yeah, I, I did see that comment actually. Right, it was so sad because he's like, "Oh, Evangelion," I, even though he loves Evangelion, and it, sh- it should have had the opposite effect. Weird. <laughs> I mean, hey, I put, I titled it and thumbnailed it the way I did because you know what? It's, it's the best chance it has at getting anybody to click on it. <laughs> well, especially with even the fucking movie just coming out, so I understand, and I like the the thumbnail is funny. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I'm ready to move on to the Reddit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, first off is the Bleach one shot, uh, or rather, what the what's reaction to it? I thought Vindy exposed was the. Uh, okay, no, no y'all recorded on Sunday week. last week, and it's Sunday yeah, today, but I don't remember seeing that. I don't yeah, know, yeah, maybe I, like I just yeah, barely I posted that it was... after the episode. I don't know, no, yeah, it no, was posted you hadn't last seen it Saturday. Last time either. Yeah, you, you hadn't seen you mentioned you hadn't seen it, and I quoted it at you. Oh, well, oh, well. unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, what reacting to the the bleach one <laughs> shot, which is fair enough, honestly. <laughs> uh, the next image is funny. Like I'll give it to it. It's it's funny, walking past yeah. rap fans with real music like video game OSTs. That's 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 good. I'll give him that one. Um, something about what hating the French. Like he's the biggest French <laughs> hater on the podcast. Uh, I I would have laughed at that. That was posted by Mega Graphics. Uh, it's not, but it would have been funny. <laughs> and then the last one, I I don't I don't know if I want to rant about it right now, but essentially. <laughs> I, I made I remade my or really I made one change to my anime four by four and I um I I made a manga five by five instead of four by four because I have too many things that I I love too much now um and manga I, six, six by six win no that I I, I have to cap it at a five <laughs> by five like as as much as like my body was like I I can't have neither like I have to have both of like Dragon Ball and MHA on there like for myself as a person at some point one of them will have to go and and I'm I'm. I understand that, but on a five by five at that point, it's like, whatever. Um, but, uh, for my anime four by four, I, I had a Gintama picture and I thought it looked good. I thought it was like the perfect picture to use. And I put it in and I stretched it a little bit to get it to fit. Cause it was, it was, it was a rectangle, but it was a rectangle where its proportions were close enough to a square. I thought it would work as a square and I stretched it. And when I was looking at it in Photoshop, it looked fine. And, and, you know, we all agreed it wasn't perfect stretch, but like it looked fine enough that it would look good. And then I uploaded it or real quick looking at it on the stream it was much smaller um, yeah right where when I, when I, yeah when we saw it when it, you posted it on twitter and you could get a good look at it and zoom in it's like oh yeah this is obviously like stretched, yeah it's not great and i uh, i don't like it um but i'm not going to remake my uh mm-hmm. my four by four with a new image and then uh repost it in tw- twitter and stuff so it'll have to sit like that till uh, I find new things to remake my 4x4s, which will be... I mean, the last time I remade them all was... I mean, my games one I made a couple months ago in March, but the last time I touched my anime or my manga ones was last August. So maybe in a year. It'll get updated. Mm-hmm. Okay. This, um, this picture wouldn't have been so scuffed if it was just Robico. 
maybe the adaptation will uh, change your number one spot. <sighs> All right. Uh, so do you want to get into the topic for this week? Yeah. All right. Uh, Nun, do you want to introduce it since you had the idea a second no. after I did? You introduce it. <laughs> uh, so the, the topic for this week, uh, the reason I said that is we were trying to come up with a topic and none and I had, I had the idea and said it. And I guess none had also had the idea and was about to type it in. But um, <laughs> the topic uh, for this week is we're going to talk about, um, so both video games that are based on anime and then a little bit probably on anime that are based on video games. So it's maybe going to be about anime video games, um, which, you know, I... I think it's an interesting topic because I think, like, you know, it, it happens a lot, especially, I think, with action shows, right? Like, you'll be watching, like, you know, fucking, like, One Piece or Naruto or something or reading it, mm -hmm. and you're like, this is fucking awesome. I want to play as, I want to play this in a video game, right? Because, like, anime is such, like, a passive medium where you're watching and you don't do anything. Like, you, you just watch it. Mm -hmm. That I don't think it's a surprise that people want then want to play an active role in it. Mm-hmm. Well, especially when you have like franchises, franchises like Sword Art Online that like couch themselves in video games. So of course, there's going to be Sword Art Online video games. Are they good? From what I hear, <laughs> no, but <laughs> they exist. Um, and yeah, obviously, like, like any licensed thing, a lot of them aren't going to be good. But you know, that's just whatever. Uh, it seems like the shows that are like made to be a game are always the ones that are actually just like bad as a game for some reason. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well i think it's because like it's hard to act to accurately like portray you know like a video game mechanic in like a show because you have to make it entertaining as a show right whereas if you just take like like if you you know have like a, a show that like is a really entertaining action show there are times where you can turn that into a pretty fun to play video game right or like with fighters you know they take aspects of um dragon ball and you put it into a fighting game and it actually like comes out uh, playing pretty yeah. fun I guess to kind of start the discussion, what are some of our, you know, anime games that we like, like games adapt based on an anime? Like what are some ones that we remember like liking and enjoying, I guess, because uh, I haven't played any since I was like a kid. So um, as in like the most recent one I played was probably like Budokai, Budokai Tenkaichi 2. No, I did play One Piece Burning Blood for like 10 minutes and I hated it, but uh, oh well. Um... <laughs> So I'll go first because I know Nun will go the longest here. Uh, so no, yeah, I've been wanting to hear more about Nun's like encyclopedic knowledge of anime-based games because he's played so many from the sounds of it. So, uh, uh, so for example, with uh, I know for a fact, um, what the only, the first anime-related game I remember playing uh, was uh, it's Gash Bell, but it was you know here is Zatch Bell. Uh, the Zatch Bell GameCube game at a friend's house at my older brother's best friend's house when I was a kid. Um, we were playing the Zatch Bell GameCube game. I don't remember anything about Zatch Bell, but I remember playing that fucking game. And then, uh, I didn't really play any, I played the demo for Storm 2. Um, and I had like some weird ones. Like I had, uh, oh fuck, what is it? Uh, I had the, the, the Game Boy version of the Dragon Ball trading card game, like the game for that. Ah. Yeah, that game was terrible. Hadn't read Dragon Ball, hadn't seen Dragon Ball as a kid. Had that game, and I had a PSP Dragon Ball game. Whatever one of the, the Budokai games. I talked about my Dragon Ball video for that game. Um, and then I didn't really play any anime games until I started, like, buying my own games. Um, and I've played, I mean, Jump Force is, like, whatever, but I don't think it is as bad as people say. I've been playing through the Storm games on stream. One is terrible, two is fine so far. Um... I really like fighters. I think fighters, like the Dragon Ball Fighter Z, is uh, really fucking fun and really good. And um, the other one is uh, I have the the One Piece. Um, or I guess I have Pirate Warriors, but I haven't played much of that. And then I have uh, the open world game, uh, World Seeker. And that one I want to talk about a little bit more in detail uh, later because I have like a topic I want to bring up specifically that I'll bring World Seeker in. Um, but I think World Seeker is a really interesting game, even if I haven't played it that much because i think it does some really cool and interesting things mechanically as an anime game mm -hmm. uh and yeah i mean I, I of all of those my favorite is easily fighters i think fighters is like just a great game like even outside of just like you know being like a really good for an anime game it's like just a great fucking video game um that's super fun even if it's not maybe like the most whatever like technical fighting game or if like you know super hardcore fighting game fans don't like it i, I 
I think it's fun as fuck. And I think it looks amazing. Um, great music, easy to pick up, you know, uh, which, you know, I, I prefer as a, not a big fighting game guy. So yeah. If I had to pick a single favorite, uh, anime game, it probably, at least the one I had the most fun with over the course of, you know, my playing it, uh, probably Dragon Ball Budokai three. Um, cause like, I just remember playing that one more than the other two. And I uh, playing it with my brother Wait, a was lot. Was it Budokai or was it Budokai Tenkaichi? No, the original Budokai. Or 3D? It was well. Okay. It was it was most partly like there was there was three D you know three um but it was I mean it yeah I get what you, I, yeah. I know the difference between yeah it was like two point five D yeah like you could still go back and like more like Tekken right then yeah where, yeah yeah uh, Budokai Tenkaichi had more like a more open sort of right uh you know right so uh, yeah it was I like, like an arena one. brawler it was more of a. Uh, yeah, yeah I, like a Tekken. I, I barely okay, I just wanted played to make sure. Budokai Tenkaichi two or three. Um, after that, like really since the yeah, but but yeah, I, I, Budokai three was just the one that I remember liking the most. Uh, the opening, <laughs> I, I would I like the song and because it's just an instrumental of one of the uh, Dragon Ball songs, I think. But it's it was I remember really, and the animation was cool and it had GT stuff, so that was kind of fun. Um, even though I, I I did watch some of GT, but I was, now looking back, I'm like I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh and it's especially fun because like i i played goku a lot my brother played vegeta and so like a lot of our battles were just like goku and vegeta right so it was just like the perfect uh you know Mm -hmm. um like rivalry thing and it was just a game we sunk a lot of time into and uh yeah like thinking back i can't think of an anime game i enjoyed more um though i guess one that i remember at least playing later was uh one piece unlimited adventure the first one on the wii uh, I did. I like that one enough. It's kind of an eh, action adventure game kind of thing. Like look, look, thinking back, but I mean, it came out in like on the Wii in like what 2007, 2008, uh, which would have been like I would have been you know really into One Piece already at that point. Does it so, use motion uh, controls? Like, do you have to like throw out your fist to use like uh, go go with no pistol? Fucking, I don't fucking remember. Maybe like little like you know waggle things, but nothing like major. Uh, I would love uh, it if like you could do like the Gatling gun, and you had to just take your like with the Wiimote and nunchuck and just start fucking going to town on the air to uh, you know you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, uh, the all the One Piece games I played, I played oh, maybe two that were more just fighting focused, and I didn't like them at all. Like I tried to play uh, Burning Blood, like I said, and I just really didn't like it from the beginning. I don't even think I have more than an hour in it. Uh, I just don't like how it plays at all. Um, and I also played it a few years ago or not that long ago at all. Um, and yeah, I played a bunch of the Dragon Ball games. I never played any Naruto games. Um, I borrowed a Metabots game from a friend and I really like, like a 2D one on the uh, GBA and that one was really cool, but it was, I borrowed it. So it's not like I could, uh, play it a lot. Um, what were you going to say then? Sorry. You hate it. You hate Naruto. I mean, I like Naruto. I was just never into it, and I always had a chip on my shoulder because I liked One Piece more, and no one else agreed with me <laughs> because Naruto was like the biggest thing ever, and One Piece was that dumb four kids dub show, and uh, <laughs> so uh, eventually that like turned into I uh, just an outright dislike of Naruto, <laughs> and uh, until I reread another dead show, um, so yeah, I never played any of the games. Uh, and Kraftstorf, uh, dog shit, so I maybe hated. I made out like a bandit there. He Kraftstorf spite hates uh, Naruto just because it was more popular in the West <laughs> than One Piece. I did, yeah, unironically. You oh, still Yu-Gi-Oh. do. Oh, I forgot about Yu-Gi-Oh because uh, I mean I played a bunch of those games, obviously, and I like the ones that match the mechanics of the actual trading card be- game better because some of the older right. ones uh, didn't. Um, yeah. Because I feel like with Yu-Gi-Oh, there's, like, two kinds of games. There's, like, games that are more based on, like, the anime or the manga, you know, where it's, like, they get crazy mm-hmm. and are insane. And then there's ones that are just, like, trading card simulators, right? Like, the same as, like, the Magic the Gathering games, you know? Right, right. And I, I really like those. Um, though the funny thing about the only other ones is that they usually had, like, type advantages. So, like, Karibo could actually defeat Blue-Eyes White Dragon in combat because Karibo was, like, Shadow, and Shadow had an advantage against Light. So, uh, it was so stupid. <laughs> Um, I remember there was one where you could like make, make like custom cards out of like pieces and they just had like, they had like kind of, um, like you get like a head and a leg or something like that. And then you, or, uh, and I remember having one that was like a level four monster with like 2000 attack, which was really fucking strong in those days. Um, 
and I don't know, just a lot of, I'm just remembering back and there's a lot of weird shit. There was the one on the PS1, I think, that was insanely fucking difficult. Like, it, apparently it will literally cheat you and it never even got past, like, the first duel. Um, Forbidden Memories, that's what it was called. Um, God, I just, yeah, I totally forgot about Yu-Gi-Oh! That's a whole uh, other beast. Um, and yeah, I guess go, moving, stepping it slightly away from video games, I was just really into Yu-Gi-Oh! for years. Uh, so even if it's not as video games, it was as a trading card game. So, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, um, what were some of your favorites, Nun? Uh, see, this is a little hard because, um, I, like, at least one of my favorites, like, Budokai Tenkaichi 3, I re like, I didn't play all of it again, but I, like, tried playing it, and I didn't really like it, even though it was, like, one of my favorites, so it's like, um... Like, I still see things about it that are, like, really different different about it compared to other um, Dragon Ball games that I've played. Because it, it has, like, not only does it have, like, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, GT, but it also has, like, what-if stories. So, um, and also has the movies in it. So, it has, like, literally everything and, like, ev- like almost every character in it. So, it just, like, has more content, like, I guess in terms of the story and, like, the characters in any dragon ball game really um, no i remember when they were coming out people were joking about how like oh the next game gonna is gonna have like the farmer with a shotgun because like they'd already run the pool so dry even by the second one of just how many fucking characters they included in that game uh, so i never even thought about looking up the roster for the third one because goddamn sorry go ahead. yeah i used to like play it all the time and i was like mm-hmm. like it, it was probably one of the fondest um experiences that i have with an anime game um but like i guess two other ones that i really like um were clash of ninja 2 and uh i think the first budokai um i think it was the first one it was the one it was like the one that had like a red case like the background was red and goku was like super sane um Mm -hmm. and i remember like playing it a lot with like my brother and you know we would kind of like kind of sort of take turns on the story um i remember particularly we both like took turns trying to beat raditz like even though it was like such an early thing it was like one of the hardest parts in the game because like it has you know how goku holds down raditz to like get piccolo Mm -hmm. to hit him with the special beam cannon in that it's like a whole different like i I mean maybe it's like a mini game you have to like swirl this like swirl the um the stick like really hard to like um make him be aligned with piccolo and it like it was just like really difficult compared to literally everything else <laughs> so just yeah. that like beginning part was so it i don't know like it took so long um but i really like that game i haven't replayed it so i have no idea if it's like actually good um and it's only the first one so i don't really i, I wouldn't see it holding up as much um i did play the second one re- like for the first time recently and that one was not uh that great because it doesn't even like it's not even accurate with the story like at all which mm. it's not like a problem per se but it's like um it's just kind of boring because like it, it literally like throws in characters who weren't part of the arcs like like okay so like in every arc they have like frieza and like cell running around for example like Cell and Frieza are in the Boo arc for some reason, and they're just, like, on this, like, game board where you can run into them while you're still trying to deal with, like, Boo. So it's, like, it's, like, really weird, and it's not actually, like, telling the story, and so, you know, you're just doing this, like, boring game board kind of thing, and, you know, the gameplay is, like, okay, but it's not, like, something that I'm super into, so if you're not, like, telling the story in a coolish looking way, plus the gameplay not being that good, it's just, like well i'm playing yeah. this but it, you know um i guess another one that i really like was uh was naruto ninja council 2 on the on the gba which is it's like a uh i don't know what kind of like genre that this game type's called um but it was like 2d um there are sprites beat em um, up or i don't know if it's considered a beat em up i really don't know um i uh, yeah i'm looking up gameplay this is absolutely a beat em up okay it's like a side it real, scrolling. It's, it's a side scrolling beat 'em up, but not like a isometric one. But yeah, this is a beat 'em up. Okay. I mean, yeah, this is this is what it like looks like. I guess for crafts to see. 
and sometimes there can be like multiple enemies on the screen. Okay. Um, it's a really simple game, and it's probably one that I've like one of the games that I've played the most, just because it's like really short and portable, um, right? Like, so you can play it out. I don't even know if it goes up to but... Sasuke Retrieval or not. I feel like it might only, it might only be the tuning exams. I might be wrong on that. I know you do fight Gar. I think fighting Gar is the end of the game, if I'm not mistaken. But um, I don't know. It's just a really simple game. It's really fun. Um, I guess it. I don't know if it's like like see with a lot of these games, there's not really like um something I think they're doing that are that's like super interesting. But um, they're fine games for sure. Um. And I guess, like, one other, like, not, like, I've played so many of them to where it's, like, I could mention all of them, but, uh, I also really like the Ninja Heroes series, which was, like, the PSP series where, um, it's not all of them, like, retell the story, but, like, some of them kind of do. Um, like, it's weird because, like, the first game does, and the second game doesn't, but it's not, like, labeled a spinoff or anything. Like, it, like, it's called Heroes 2. You would think, like, you know, when they're not, like, retelling it, it'll, title, it'll be titled different, but it wasn't. Um, then Heroes 3, I think, resumes and, like, actually tells a story. I think Heroes 3 is, like, it's, like, pain stuff. Um, okay. Whereas Heroes 2 is, like, it has this, like, whole original story. Um, it's, like, I think, like, they're, like, they're in some kind of, like, mansion or something. Or, like, uh, a fortress, I think it is. And they go through a hundred floors and there's like some mini games and like some kind of original story. I don't remember what exactly the story was, but you know, it was just like an entirely original thing. Um, but like most of my memories with this series is like with the first game, uh, mostly because I remember being like super stuck on like the hard mode and, and like, and then after the hard mode, there was like a mode that was called insane mode. I think, I think it was called insane um hard mode like both me and my brother were stuck on and like i and, and i kept playing it and playing it and like eventually like when he was like literally in the shower i beat it and i was like i beat it i beat it um and i was super excited about that um but then like insane mode like at the mode that's supposed to be harder than like hard is like it, it was actually like i guess it glitched or something i don't know but basically what happened was like uh, the character, like, I think I was fighting Itachi, and he was just, like, literally standing there, and he didn't move the entire match, <laughs> and I just beat Insane because of that. Uh, I don't know, I don't even remember if I had tried replaying it to see if he'd actually, like, do something, but, uh, I just beat the game. Like, I beat hard that I was stuck on, and then I just beat the harder mode right after. Um, With no issue, that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of like I guess like storm like the storm series is definitely something that I've um played a lot of and I would say is probably one of the higher quality uh games just because you know all those like uh, cinematic cutscenes with all the buttons that you press and like you know really making those moments look cool um like those big climatic moments look cool and that's you know a lot of why people play anime games um mm. No, yeah, the Ninja Storm games are probably, like, the most, like, some of the most most celebrated ones that from, you know, maybe too celebrated, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would say that they're probably, like, you know, some people might overrate them a little bit, but they're pretty good. Um, I haven't beaten all of them. Uh, like, I've beaten two, like, I've beaten two generations. Uh, I forget what the other spinoff is called. I've beaten the most of them, though. The only ones I haven't beaten is one and, like, the newest one, which is four, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess most of my memories are with, like, three because uh, that's just the one that I played the most. And I think it doesn't really have as many issues as, like, one or two. Um, not that two has that many issues, but three is, like, super streamlined and you can just, like, go into all the missions, basically. I don't, I don't remember there being that much, like, in-between things, which is, like, the problem with one, where it's just, like, so many things you have to do before you can actually even play the story. Um, mm -hmm. Like, collecting scrolls, going around a boring village. Twos was, like, it makes more sense why there's in-between, because it wants you to travel between the locations. 
Um, but just sometimes it can get like a little too much. Um, if you're, if you have to go all the way back to somewhere, uh, uh, I, I feel like I could keep going about all of the ones that I played, but I've also played like Dragon Ball ones, like, like Dragon Ball in terms of like the, the original Dragon Ball with only Dragon Ball in it, which, you know, isn't many Dragon Ball games considering, you know, Z's the one that's always um always done uh i guess the most interesting dragon ball game that i played that was dragon ball was like advanced adventure which is you know it's also a beat em up but it's like i th- i would think this one actually holds up more than um ninja council 2 which i i haven't replayed advanced adventure as much but i remember it being more fun and like more variety in terms of what you're looking at and um who you're fighting and i feel like it controlled like better at least from what i remember like it's just kind of fun to move around in that game but uh i just I did you, you did either of you ever about. play um legacy of goku i think it was called the game boy advanced one no where yes, it's like almost I have. what the what the hell was that game do you remember anything about it or enough of it to talk because i'm like because i'm thinking about the game and it's like what the fuck was that game uh, uh i mean like, i know it was like an rpg kind of uh mm-hmm kind of thing i don't I just remember, remember being like what way, it, it like. felt way too difficult like uh or maybe i just didn't understand the mechanics or anything but uh i like, don't I remember, remember being real. difficult but i feel like i'm uh at least like a few times i didn't know what to do not that like i kept dying or anything it was just like i didn't really know what to do maybe i was playing it wrong because i just remember thinking back to it i'm like oh yeah that game was weird um <laughs> Uh, I guess let's talk about some other games real quick. Uh, yeah, I, pl- I just well, I remembered Vindy because you mentioned Yu-Gi-Oh games, and I would add a third category to that, where games with games that aren't like uh, the card game at all or aren't okay. about the card game. Because uh, I just remembered um, w- Duelist of the Roses, which uh, uses monsters, but it has like completely different mechanics and like a grid-based thing, mm-hmm. and also uh, Falsebound Kingdom on the GameCube, which is basically an RPG where you like tame monsters who that are cards but like like I, i'm just remembering these and i'm like oh Pokemon? yeah kind of <laughs> um and I, I just like i just suddenly remembered those and i'm like oh fuck that's right <laughs> mm-hmm. um but uh i guess too i mean if you guys um well if you want to generally talk about games that's fine but i guess what i was thinking of two other potential things we could discuss is one is like you know go, uh, anime adapted from games which vindy brought up and another thing would be like anime games we'd like to see or yeah, manga, well, you know I, I i would want to talk more i think first uh before either of those about just like anime games like in in more general terms i think about like uh-huh. mechanics yeah, of fair. them or, or like you know because uh one thing i, I did want to bring up is how like so many um anime games are like 3d like arena brawlers right like even like in recent you know um like of recent games that aren't even just like naruto or what like there's um the Bla- that's the what the Black Clover game, game was. Uh, that's what the MHA games are. Um, that's Kimetsu what Yaiba. Kimetsu's game is going to be. That's what One Punch Man's game was. Um, I think there mm-hmm. are a couple there, more. And I will um, say... Fairy Tales? The Fairy Tale game was actually an RPG. Yeah, I was going to bring that up as well. Um, because that's definitely a game that I feel like would have like 50 fighting games, but I don't think it does. <laughs> um, yeah. Which is uh, the, um, and so I think that, you know, that's, that's interesting um, because... Uh, it's it's just interesting to me how there's so many like 3D arena brawlers, and I get why, right? Because it allows you to just easily put in a bunch of characters, and it's mm-hmm. you know I'm sure easier to make and, and things like that. But um, it's funny how that's like so many of them because then I think it makes the the games that aren't that stand out more, right? Um, and so also not gonna count the Musos like Pirate Warriors, the Attack on Titan games, Gundam Warriors. Um, no, yeah, there's so many games that maybe like you know. Yeah, kind of fall under the rate. Well, because I was just thinking about the uh, Otome game, Hamethura. Uh, it's like a dating sim thing, and right. there's probably a lot of games. Like, there's a fucking Hidamari sketch game. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, in terms of games that are dating sims, I yeah, can think of off the top of my head. That we uh, don't. Yeah, that aren't translated. There's a Baki Monogatari <laughs> one. There's a ReZero one. There's a Konosuba one. Um, uh, right, like there's way more. There's a K on Rhythm game in Japan. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just a lot. Sounds like there's a lot more variety, but obviously it's like such a niche market because you know, like a lot of them don't even get translated. So, 
Yes, right. Well, well even like even in, J- in Japan, the market's big enough that they can make these games, right? Because there's just more people into anime, and there's just more, you know. But with the West, it's like it's got to be, you know, the most popular stuff that like you know people can play. Where you know, like fighting, you know, sure, action game with a you know a, a, a based on a fighting series, right? That that just makes sense. Uh, where, um, right? Like even if like like yeah, I guess there was a Sailor Moon fighting game, but you know, a Sailor Moon dating sim wouldn't translate as well to english speaking audiences in the late 90s right? right um if that existed um but even though i could totally that'd probably be a thing in japan it wouldn't surprise me um so uh yeah and, and i think there's a lot um you know and, and i'm glad that now the anime is getting bigger we're getting more of these games translated and it does seem like there are some you know like games are doing like the kimetsu game i was looking at some some stuff for it i actually think it looks pretty interesting but then like yeah like i mean we mentioned World Seeker, the Fairy Tale RPG. I think that you know, uh, there are some games I can think of. There was uh, Kakarot as well. Um, like there are games I can think of that aren't you know just the, the same thing. And I think that uh, those are really interesting because um, you know, I, I mean, I, I I'm happy that those exist. And like Kakarot's a game I really want to play because like I'm I'm really interested in um like in, in action RPG in Dragon Ball because like I think you know, an RPG works really well for Dragon Ball, right? Because in a lot of ways, Dragon Ball is a series where Goku and the other characters are constantly growing and that growth is quantified mm-hmm. in the series. And um, I think that's like a really cool thing that, you know, you can work that into an RPG uh, system. And that's that's something that I think is, is really cool when you have game mechanics integrate with, I guess, mechanics of the world in the anime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you do that really well, I think mm-hmm. is, a, is like a really cool yeah. thing that I, I can think of... Uh, one game that I think does it really well. Yeah, I think I know the one you're thinking of, right? World Seeker? Yeah, because World Seeker does some really cool stuff. Like, um, the way it uses hockey, right, is there's two types of hockey. There's observation and armament, and you switch between them. And so when you do that, you have different, like, abilities based on it. And I think that's, like, a cool way to, to work hockey into a game system. And I, I haven't played this, so I, I I am pretty sure it's true, though. But apparently, there's, like, Zoro DLC. <laughs> and in the Zoro DLC, you don't have a map. No, your map, your mini map is fucked up. Apparently, that's right uh, because Zoro so. has no sense of direction, <laughs> which is a great way of working this like recurring joke from One Piece into your game mechanics. You know, uh, no, another way I've heard that happen is I think it's in Jump Force, but Sanji does zero damage oh, yeah, against he, female characters. Yeah, he can't um, even. Like, yeah, he, he can't hit them. Right, because to fit because he doesn't in the series. So. That's funny. I didn't know that. That's cool. They, right, I think, they make, yeah, I think yeah. he just stops and he like has hearts in his eyes. I think okay, that's how I, I heard it. how I heard of it is like I, he still like does the animation, but it, they just don't take any health damage. But maybe that was a different game, or maybe I just misremembered. But uh, yeah, that's I mean, I uh, that's, that's, that's good. Right. <laughs> um, so you know, and it's cool to see that level of attention uh, to detail and stuff. Uh, like I guess to go back to Dragon Ball games, I always like it's it's funny seeing well Hercule in the translated where he's always got like a jetpack and he does ball like he's weak. Right, like, or they'll they'll translate some of those uh, character differences like that into the gameplay at times, and it's fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, it does change the animations. Like he's doing like attacks, yeah, I'm, I'm but he's it. like shooting out hearts. Yeah, and like he'll hit him and then stop and like get hearts in their eyes and try to grab him as well, and they'll like slap his hand away. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's funny that Sanji can't hurt uh, female characters like that a lot, actually. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, uh, I would like to see more variety in, um, in anime games. And I think that, like, you know, I'm sure, like, I, I would almost be willing to put money down that Arxis is working on another anime fighter um, because fighters did so well, right? Um, and obviously, I don't think another one, like, I don't think, the only one that I think could maybe, and I'm not just saying this because uh, I stand it, but I when I just think about how large it is in the West, the, actually, I guess there's a couple. The only ones I think that could maybe rival Dragon Ball sales-wise would be like Naruto, MHA, or Kimetsu. I think are the only ones that sales-wise... I, my, a thought I just had would be a jump one. Yeah, I mean, just a jump general, one would be really uh, cool. I just don't know if yeah. you know that would happen realistically. Mm-hmm. But um, I think if they do any of those three, then... But I mean, you know, I, I would be surprised with how well Fighters did if, if they're not working on another one. Um, and I mean, I hope we get more uh, interesting um games based on anime oh should we also talk about the the fucking big elephant in the room that we do have to mention if we're talking about games based on anime sure gotcha uh, fuck 
Wait, That's what? right. I, I, I just record. thought about oh. it. It's like, I just thought about it. We can't talk about it and not talk about gotcha. Because I mean, in Japan, uh, every fucking huge, yeah. anime or manga has a fucking gotcha. Um, I know there was like a Haikyuu one. There's like multiple MHA ones, One Piece ones, Bleach, Dragon Ball. Like they, there's so many gotchas for, uh, or so many gotcha games for uh, all the fucking, like almost any property you can think of. There was that one you were playing that just had like all these cute girl shows in it. Yes, uh, Magi or no, not um, Karara Fantasy, which was based on uh, the Kara- the Karara brand of uh, magazines, mostly seinen like Hidamari Sketch and uh, New New Game and Yuyushiki, like all a bunch of, and it it had like fantasy designs of the characters, um, which was cool. I don't have images on hand, but even just like even if you like a lot of those Kaon, like a lot of those kind of shows, it's probably worth it to just go look up the designs. Yeah, I'm, because I'm it's looking cool at this. See. It's yeah, I see New Game, <laughs> I see Hidamari Sketch, I see fucking I think Yuru Yuri. Yeah, this is Maybe. this is actually kind of pod. Right, and you get to see them reimagined in like, okay, well, what class would they be? Uh, what you know? So, you, <laughs> oh my god, this game's based. Right, it's holy what, what, fuck. Look at this. There's a figure based off it. Yeah, she's hot. <laughs> I mean, so this is this is the the appeal of gotcha games. Okay, if we're if we're being honest, this is the appeal of gotcha games is a billion designs for characters you like. Um, you know, getting to own them, getting to see them. Uh, and I'm and, sure and if, if I could speak Japanese or read it, I could, I would enjoy seeing the character interactions between these. You know, it's a crossover thing, right? Like, right. That's that's fun. Like getting to imagine, like you know. Uh, oh my god! It actually one. had a Kon expansion. <laughs> there was a Kon banner for this game. Look. All right, I gotta stop looking. I'm okay. Yeah, I know it, it's a rabbit hole. You're kind of <laughs> the but... bigger a rat, not a rabbit. Different rodent. Um, <laughs> wow. Um... <laughs> But no, I mean, yeah, I think gotcha are, are, are gotcha is super important to um, to anime games because I mean, you know, clearly it's not the future of anime games, thankfully, right? Uh, because Kimetsu's getting a game, and you know what I mean. Fighters did super well. Or, and... Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still I don't like gotcha still seems to be popular. Like the fact that right. there are so many, right? Like even in the in the West, it's different, right? Because obviously, like. Maga Record got closed down, and we not every single one gets translated, right? Because that's just unfeasible. Um, so, yeah, it, it, mm-hmm. it's uh, I don't know how long they're going to last because uh, pe- you know. Uh, I mean, I think they'll last really for, like like them forever, and spending really, money yeah. on them. Um, maybe they will last forever, yeah. But uh, right. Oh my god! I, I didn't talk about my favorite uh, anime game that I want to come out right now. Have you guys seen the JoJo's Battle Royale? What? I s- okay, you haven't. Hmm. Okay, so in uh, Japan, in Japanese arcades, there's a JoJo's Battle Royale. How the fuck does that work? You're in Morio. Dude, it looks so insane. I watch gameplay of it all the time just because it's so... Because, like, you play as the characters, like, have their stands. So, like, if you're playing as uh, fucking, uh, like... If you are play like if you play as, like, characters who can, like, stop time, you you blink forwards, right? As you stop time and, and move forwards, right? Um, okay. If you're, like, Bucciarati, you can, like, hide in objects because he can, like, zipper and stuff. Um, it has, like, Giorno and he can, like, make things. Here, you can, like, click around this. Uh, hopefully this has, like, multiple characters. But yeah, like there's a fucking arcade JoJo's Battle Royale. It might be on PS4 or whatever as well, but I know it was originally an arcade game. Um, and I want this game to be localized so bad, I would stream the fuck out of it. It looks that so fun. Sound, no, like an asymmetrical Battle Royale. That, like, that sounds interesting. Yeah, and it has, it has like music going on, like JoJo's like OPs and stuff. And like you're in more, it looks so sick. Uh, I think this, I actually think it's one of the most interesting, um, Anime, anime games, games or Battle I've Royale seen. games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's one of the most interesting ones I've seen. Because um, then there's, like, Mista, who's just, like, he has a gun, right? And that's, like, cool as well. And, like, there's sound effects everywhere as you walk around. Uh, it's, I feel like this would be super interesting, too, if, like, they implement the thing that, like, a lot of Battle Royales do, where you can pay money for, like, new costumes and stuff. Um, I feel like this is definitely worth... I hope something more is done with it. I want this! Yeah, it looks super sick, doesn't it? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> um, I I just like, remembered about it, and I I would have killed myself if I hadn't mentioned this because it's such a cool idea for a game. No, yeah, like that's the thing with like anime games is that they tend to be like 
you know, like like you said, arena fighters, like they almost tend to be like a safe option or just like like a Heat Mario sketch game isn't trying to market itself out. So, like I could see almost see people playing this just because like it's interesting, right? Not even if they yeah. even if they don't care about like, JoJo, right? But or Fighter Z or Fighters rather rather. Yeah. Like, JoJo's is uh, popular as game. fuck in the West. Oh no, it totally is, but you know so it would do um, well. People would play it. Like this should absolutely be localized as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Um because I, I do think it would do, like, really, really well, actually. Because, yeah, like, I guess what I was thinking about is, like, you know, hypothetical anime games we might like to see. Like, even if, like, that, that sounds really cool, like, obviously, like, it's not necessarily feasible. Um, right. Like, one subject I remember people bring up was, like, a Made in Abyss video game. And it is getting a video game, apparently. But, uh, like, you know, just the, the setting is kind of, like, a perfect fit for a video game, I feel. Like, mm-hmm. uh, the way it's, like, layered and treasure hunting... You know, there's a few different ways they can go about it. So, uh, I, I'm trying to remember. There was, a, I think, a, a DS game that people were comparing to Made in Abyss, but I forget what it was called. I'm sure someone in the comments remembers. Enter an Odyssey. That was it. Thank you. I couldn't remember the name of it. I, Craft Store, I know my video games. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, so it's, you know, Made in Abyss video game that isn't actually Made in Abyss video game. Right. But, uh, what are some other series that could, uh, um, have yeah, like a, a wish list of interesting sorts. ones? Um, I mean, I, I'll start with, like, ones that, like, I think could, like, obviously, and you mentioned it, right? Um, but I, I want a Fighters game th- or a Smash game, because I know there was a DS Smash clone, but either, like, a, a, a tag fighter like Fighters or, like, a Super Smash Brothers style game for Jump um, with just mm-hmm. a bunch of characters. Look, you can make it, like, make it, like, 2D, right? Make it, like, pixel art so you can put, just pump characters in that game, like, make it look like, like Super Smash Flash 2 even. And just give me, like, 80 fucking jump characters. I don't care. <laughs> Pack that bitch. You know what I mean? Like, um, that. Um, or just, like, even, like, a Naruto Fighters game. Uh, I would fucking adore. Uh, speaking of a game that would be, like, a cool, like, fighter or, you know, like, Smash-like fighter, uh, Pretty Cure. Okay. Yeah. There's and you could have like, all the different, like, or a bunch of different, like, uh, pretty Pretty Cure seasons in it? Yeah. The only problem I could think of is, like, readability because there's, like, you know, 18 pink characters and, like, how, you know, how like, how, do, how do you make those immediately distinct, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, which maybe that doesn't need to be, the, but I don't know. Uh, you know, just a thought I had uh, as far as, like, that would be fun. <laughs> just because, like, it's already an action-ish thing, so it just, it sounds like a good fit and it's a big franchise, so there's a lot of, like characters they can use uh that might have uh cool powers and stuff uh Mm -hmm. and of course you know they all like they could all throw down with just fists if they need to so something precure would be cool um of course the other biggest problem and reason like that's never gonna happen is because the primary audience is seven-year-old girls right they're they don't want to play like a fighting game yeah um yeah so okay i have one let me know what you think about this one, because I I've thought about this one a lot before, and how I think it would actually be like legitimately really cool and really fun. Uh, a Hunter Hunter MMO. Hmm. So an MMO set in you know the the world of Hunter Hunter, um, okay. where you're a hunter, and so you're going on you know quests or like your hunter jobs. Um, you can have Nin as like you could make a gameplay mechanic out of that, where instead of classes you you make your. Uh, I mean, obviously you couldn't have like all the, like everyone has their own Nin power, but instead of classes you do you know your Nin attribute you select at the start. Right, right. So, It'd be yeah. cool if, if they did like as like a quiz, like a re- like you took. Oh, a person, I, you, you take a personality and you, yeah, quiz, your like thing how uh, Mystery Dungeon did it. Mm-hmm. Or that's how mm-hmm. uh, Dragon Quest Three assigns you're starting a uh, character personality, yeah. which affects your stat growth. So yeah, something like that. Like that yeah, you fun. take a quiz and then it'll get your Nen type, and then like maybe something else. I don't know how you'd go about like having enough options for powers to where it can like it i i think it feel yeah. point, good but I mean, you would have to get rid know. of like that idea and it would literally just have to be like this nin type is like a more supportive class and this is how what this yeah like it would literally it would just have to be classes don't think, an mmo but i, I think, think that, it could be that would classes be fun but i do think there could be at least a couple options un- options under each nin type. right like subclasses like maybe four or so options for every nin type or something so not Maybe every it, this specialist does be, the same thing, hmm. for example. I wonder, I wonder if there would be a way to, like, some kind of, like, basic, like, customization as far as, like, creating abilities or powers. Like, I, I, could, I could see that being really hard to make, like, both I, I good think and maybe interesting what and balanced. Could... But, uh, like, yeah, maybe some, yeah, like, something would be like a little too unbalanced. Because the whole thing with men is individuality, right? But, uh, and that like would kind be of lost. impossible to do in uh, any game, really. Like it's really I, hard. At I least, don't know if it's impossible. Like I guess like they could try like 
if you pick this specific ability, you can customize it in the sense that like, uh, you know, I'd rather I'd rather this ability be faster than it is stronger. So your right. version of that's faster rather than stronger. Or, or you, you could, know, you know, like, like you can customize um, status it a little effects bit. or right. Like there's, you know, there's ways you can do that. But uh, yeah, it's definitely tricky to make it, it feel like distinct. I mean, yeah, it's a but, lot of uh, effort, but uh, yeah, I don't, it could be interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, did you have any ideas? None. Uh, I had one, but I forgot Okay, well, I'll give one that I had a while ago that I remember. Th- um, a One Piece, like, open world RPG, I feel like that could work in the sense of, like, like with a custom character in the sense of, like... Oh, I uh, see what you're saying, yeah. I kind of imagine it more like almost like the Elder Scrolls, uh, where, you know, you start okay. out and you, you pick... You, instead of, like, having your classes, you pick, like, does your character have a Paramecia, a Zone, or a Logia? And those are kind of, like, your three classes, right? Because, like... Um, one thing with the problem with like a one piece MMO is like devil fruits are unique so they can get around that by having like three player devil fruits and then all the NPCs in the world with devil fruits can have that unique devil fruit and they won't have to worry about like any kind of overlap or anything. Right. Or, um, and so like, I just like a zone would be like a more power class because, you know, they increase your damage and stuff with Logias would be like more of a spellcaster. And then the Paramecias would be more like a, it depends on whatever, what, like, you know, the, right. the, you'd only get the one option. But uh, they could do something cool with that. And then, yeah, you get to choose, like, do you become a Marine? Do you become a Pirate, right? A uh, Bounty Hunter. Like, I, I could see that being, like, in, in a, right. working in, a, like, a sense even, that an Elder Scrolls game works. I think right? for something like um, that, I would almost want it, like, weirdly enough, to be both, like, the way that, like, when you say that, right? The the, the immediate way my brain goes to that is, is it's set in, like, I guess a parallel universe from One Piece, right? Mm-hmm. And it's a set as a prequel to One Piece. So instead of it being at the time of the, the generation of Luffy and Law and everyone, you're mm-hmm. at the time of Gold Roger and Whitebeard and... Um, or maybe in between, like, after Roger's death, but oh, before... I was going to say, the, the reason I would deal. want it in... Because, like, ideally, if this comes out after One Piece and you could have it with Gold mm-hmm. Roger and Whitebeard, if you choose to be a pirate, you can choose um, who which crew to side with to go to Raftel, and you could, mm-hmm. you know, either make yourself or you could make Gold Roger or you could make Whitebeard... You know, even like a Fallout New Vegas thing where it's like, okay, um, I can side with Gold Roger. I could side with Whitebeard. I could make my own crew. Um, mm-hmm. And if I side with Whitebeard and we get to Raftel, now Whitebeard's the next pirate okay. king. Yeah. Oh, or if I, I side with Gold okay, Roger, now yeah. he's the pirate king. And or like you can side and, with the Marines and stop them, right? Right, like, exactly. And end the era <laughs> um, of pirates altogether. Right. So, yeah, no, like that I, That could, you know, uh, like I that would, I feel like that would make the most sense for like a, a One Piece game where you can create your own character. But it also just sounds like even just trying to imagine it sounds really ambitious. Or another idea I had is just now actually is like um, have a kind of like there's like characters you can recruit into your party, like from a, maybe it's like a list of 20, maybe it's a list of like 50 uh, I don't know how many, like, you know, so so basically a crew, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, like, but that's where it gets really ambitious, because, like, would it be, like, a JRPG where they have all their own unique, like, subquests and stories? Like, how in-depth are we going there? But it's, like, I don't know, it's already such an ambitious idea that, I like, do, uh, I, I think maybe with that, somehow you could, like, divide certain characters within that list of options under, like, a specific personality archetype, and... Like mm-hmm. those characters would basically like share the same story mm. or oh, quests yeah, yeah. practically to like gotcha. cut down on like the unique. Oh, kind like, of, kind of like Animal Crossing, unique. where yeah. Animal Crossing has like different animals with different personality types, but then they'd have the, then yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Um. Though another, I uh, it would also be cool to just have like a JRPG, like whether like with just an original crew having its own original story in the setting somewhere. Yeah. Right? And, and that, like more like Dragon Quest, right? Where it's just a more tightly focused thing. And, and you could, could do it. Cool. It would be really cool. I would fucking love if you did it like this, where you could even set it at the time, if you do that, like at the time of like Luffy and shit, but make it a very small scale story, right? Don't make it this massive story spanning all these things. Make it a small story where maybe you're going around you know the grand line and maybe you do go to you know certain islands that, that you know luffy and his crew have been to maybe you go to alabasta or you end up going to skypea or um you mm-hmm. know you do something at marineford but it's not this massive world ending story it's like a very small self-contained thing and then you can have it still be like a really good game and throw in these hints of characters from one piece mm-hmm. like you know 
coming in and that would also be i think really cool right like you go to tavern and you just look at the bounty posters on the wall and there's luffy and he's got this bounty so you know it takes place around this time period right like that kind of right. thing and maybe um, that changes as you play throughout the game and people you talk to will tell you different things about what's going on with luffy and the other characters and that could be really cool yeah um, like yeah, you could like, literally like and- explore places that like like you could see the change that luffy did to the places that you're going to or mm-hmm. like if you mm-hmm. arrived there before him for some reason you can see like certain things Alabast, like alabaster is a shithole when crocodiles like it's savior and that kind of thing yeah. right um yeah uh cool no it's like and i guess the other thing is that like um like because like i or i guess where i was going to transition that to is just how, how i was just thinking about how like yeah a lot of anime games like you know they're about they're trying to appeal to the fans so they just kind of do the same thing as yeah, the series like and focus on the short, characters yeah. and i think that's really detrimental to sword art online games because like the appeal of sword art online i feel like a video game like at least because i remember my brother he's played a few and he's he doesn't like them because he just wants to play something yeah. resembling the games in sword art online he doesn't want to oh you're a friend and you're with kirito on his adventure or something like that right, i don't want to play like a scuffed version of the of the of alice's Asian. I or, forgot. Or there's a couple. Online. There's a couple oh. other uh, anime games I mentioned. One of them is the Alicization game I played on stream. I don't want to play a scuffed version of fucking Alicization where all of a sudden there's this red haired girl out of nowhere, <laughs> and I'm fucking like running around, like running there, and then I have to do busy work in the castle for two years because that's what Kirito and Yu-Gi-Oh did. Fuck that. I want to play in fucking Aincrad. Just it's like a random guy. Let me join the Knights of the Blood Oath if I want. Right. Let me fucking. Uh, chill out you know what let me chill with klein let me be one of klein's homies right <laughs> um let me just like play through the game i, I think actually you made a really good point and-, and-, and it's actually really interesting i actually think i would prefer and you know normally you know and-, and i think this actually just becomes comes from most uh anime games being ja- uh made in japan obviously there weren't some there was a ubisoft made naruto game but mm-hmm. like you said you know like skyrim for one piece and i'm thinking about that like for i would like a game like skyrim for sao or even for naruto or all these other series where i think that you know they, they do these 3d anime arena games but they don't try like a western rpg approach to it when i think a western rpg set in an anime universe would be a lot like would be really interesting and really fun you know and there's a lot you can do with that yeah and think about it again i think the reason why that is is um because how Japan, like a lot of Japanese franchises o- operate, is they do it in a media mix way, where uh, Positive Select has a video on that, where they kind of focus on the characters, right? right? Like the Haru franchise isn't about like, oh, let's do Haruhi, but with new characters. No, it's about these characters and what they're doing, right? So I feel right. like, I guess, yeah, a lot of these franchises, the reason that it is like that is because that's what the fran the, you know in the media mix the franchise is focused on the characters where i think when you look at a lot of western franchises that isn't the case like how many star wars properties are there versus how many star wars properties are there that are about luke skywalker right, right. like there's a lot Makes of star lot of wars sense. stuff that just goes let's do this or these characters that have nothing to do with anyone who shows up in the main movies and- Right? Interestingly enough, a lot of the things that pe- a lot of people's favorite Star Wars things outside of the original trilogy, uh, and I guess I'll say the Clone Wars show as well, are things that don't have to do with Luke. Right? It's 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 uh, mm-hmm. Knights of the Old Republic. It's the Mandalorian. It's um, like you know, I mean, I guess Luke is in these, but the Jedi Knight games, right? Like it's these things that mm-hmm. aren't actually the movies. Whereas you know, there are Star Wars games. There is like Super Star Wars, you know, for for the Super Nintendo, where it's literally just you're Luke and a platformer. Right, right, but, but no most one people wouldn't or cares say about that. that those, right, right. Most people would say, yeah, it's it's a fine game, but it's no one's favorite Star Wars game because mm-hmm. someone's favorite Star Wars game is gonna be, you know, either something like Battlefront where you like it because like a fun multiplayer game, or it's gonna be, you know, a Knights of the Old Republic, a Jedi Knight, a uh, Republic Commando, where it's these new characters in the universe that you're playing through their story, or it's your character, like especially in the case of, like Knights of the Old Republic two, where it's right. like your version of Revan or the or the Exile for Knights of the Old Republic two uh right so right you know like and i guess that's just a different like maybe that's a different mindset with how you know east versus west engages in franchises because i've thought about that where you know i feel like it's but like when you look at like um you know n- not <laughs> h stuff but like even just um doji material where a lot of it is focused on iterating like toho or kentai collection where a lot of it is like taking these characters that exist in this franchise and, and making the them naked yeah it's doing their own thing with them where i feel like in the west you're more likely to like um do something inspired by the thing but more like original characters right, right? 
because we so very they, much yeah. have an idea of like they did it first so you can't do that right mm -hmm. right um, so uh you know and like like thinking even just about my creative stuff like what are all my fan fiction uh doing st like original characters with in the same universe or based on the on or like an iteration on the the same universe basically right um, except your momo curry one <laughs> except that one and the liar game danger one but uh the moment yeah the, so like obviously like there's a you know, you know right but, obviously um, yeah right like it, it's not a binary thing because i'm you right. know but uh it's definitely like even like uh you know, Danganronpa, I think, part like, part of the reason, like, I did my fan fictions like that is because I'm able to use my original characters, but it's, like, like, every game has a different cast, even though, if the, whether the, you know, even if the mm -hmm. game's Link. Uh, so that's more, like, you know, the Western sort of, you know, way to do it, but, uh, right, I don't know, it's just interesting to think about, and, like, so, it, you know, the, yeah, there's definitely a lot of potential yeah. for anime games. I, I do have some like, more yeah. wish list ideas, by the way, if you're, we're about to move on topics. If not, it's fine, you keep saying what you're going to say, but if you're uh, going to move on, no, I have, no, like, I, a bunch I, more. I, I want to hear what I mean. I wanted to. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, yeah, okay. go. Sorry. I'm, so I think that like doing a high Q game could be interesting because, um, you know, I, even though I haven't read it, I think it's like clearly one of the most popular sports series. This man just stole so... one of my things. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> well, yeah. So you keep going, and I'll, I'll explain. Would be, like, yeah. Super interesting in terms of um getting people to play a game that's a little different from being an action game and being like you know a, a battle focused game um i don't know i think haikyuu would be a cool game to especially because like you know it would still have some of that appeal i guess to where people could like still try it if they like battle like focus games because mm -hmm. you know they are still like sports matches and like you know, it could have very exaggerated animations. Like, you know, I guess Hinata's jumping up and he has, like, wings or something. And he does this, like, really cinematic, like, I don't know, something with his um, with his play. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I do think it could be a cool game. And, you know, a lot of people in the West do talk about Haikyuu. And I think it would do well enough. Um, so, yeah, I'd be interested. Yeah, so... I was going to bring up because so there was the Captain Tsubasa game that came out recently. There was a soccer game, right? That uh, <laughs> was very silly and over the top, right? Um, another yeah. example I think of over the top silly sports games are, are the good, I'll preface the good Mario sports games, right? Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that there's a lot of space for that. Not with every sports series, no, yeah, but with like, a lot of them, you know? Yeah, something like, more um, grounded can't be that, like, uh, and. and, and, and uh, Kuroko no Basuke could. Right. I'm sure. And I'll lose I'll lose some credibility with a lot of people probably in the comments for this because I'm pretty sure a lot of the people aren't don't actually understand and they're gonna shit on me, even though, you know, uh as someone who actually does enjoy sports, right? Um, I won't lie. Uh, you know, uh if you have EA Play Pro, Madden twenty two is playable. I played some Madden today. You know? I have no shame in admitting that. I was playing some Madden. Uh played a couple games of John Madden's football. And, like, it's fun. Like, if you like, you know, a sport, a video game of that sport's fun, right? Like, a football game is fun if you like football. Yeah, is Madden been the same thing for fucking, like, 20 years? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do they make these small, minuscule changes? Yeah. Is it still fun to have a franchise with my friends where we draft the players ac across the league and then we play, like, a, a, a mock league, you know, um, where we go through multiple seasons and we draft every season and then we'll make trades with each other and, you know, you, you have to worry about your salary cap and all these other things. And then, uh, you know, you play every weekly game and it's generally against CPUs and then all of a sudden now you're playing your game against one of your friends and so then both you have to get on at the same time. And maybe if you win this game, you make playoffs and if you lose, you don't. But it, it doesn't matter for them. They're locked in first for the league. So now it's like, okay, well, you're not going to throw to me because, you know, you're an asshole, but I have to, like, over, like, I have to surpass my limits and beat you to make playoffs, right? Like, it's fun. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I could see there's a lot of anime you could do that with, not even necessarily making it, like, insane, but, like, if you really wanted to get into it, make something, like, really special. Like, imagine a K and B or a high Q or, um, like, a Yoa pedal or, or, um, you know, um, uh, 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 you know, Ace of Diamond or something like that, right? One of these major massive sports series with all these characters. You know, you could have teams and, and, you know, it works like normal. And then you could add like a franchise mode where now all the players, all the characters in the series are up for to be drafted, right? So then, you know, say you're doing a KNB one, right? You have five, you have six people, okay. right, in the league. Okay, well, all six of y'all are taking one of the Generation of Miracles. So who's taking who, right? 
And then now you have your member of the Generation of Miracles. So now in K and B, you have to base a team around him, right? Right. So yeah. now I have to pick characters, different characters in the series, and I'm creating a team that's a hodgepodge of all these different characters. And I'm building a team. They're trying to build the perfect team around my member of the Generation of Miracles up against my friends and their member of the Generation of Miracles, right? And like you could mm-hmm. ha- do a lot of really good things by making a sports game and taking a lot of the settings because like franchise mode's been in madden for years right for like over a decade it's nothing new to madden players right but i think mm-hmm. to anime fans who probably don't play madden because they don't care What's about draft football, i don't know how to right draft they don't care about football but now if you put it in the sense of it's with k and b right there are probably people who would care about that right because i mean yeah it's also in like 2k and, and you know and, and there's also a template for how these sports games could function as games right there, there's like built in like this is how the games play you know what i mean yeah, and even uh, if the characters are imbalanced, like, the draft, like, that makes it so, like, they, you know, it's, yeah, like, it's, it yeah. can still work, and then, right? Like, and then even like, outside with of... be, that sounds like the point is because, like, you just said, the Generation of Miracles, like, these characters are just the strongest, right? So, right. And, uh, and but then the draft can balance that out. Even outside of a franchise mode, right? I, I just mentioned that because that's, that's what I do in Madden is I do a franchise with my friends. That's what we all find fun. It also keeps me current with like some of the players in the nfl because i have to know them to, to draft them um but even outside of that you know you could just do exhibition matches and play fucking like um almine's team versus uh 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 murasaki bara there you go that's not i remember his team right and you could like just have them go against each other and just like play it with your friend right and it'd be fun and so i think sports games are definitely um like i'm really happy that captain tsubasa game came out and i would love to see more sports games based on sports manga and sports anime because i think you could have some really really exciting and fun ones mm-hmm. yeah um and i actually think those games could do well on top of that because uh, for example a kuroko no basuke or a slam dunk game right now you have something where say i play 2k every year and i i don't necessarily play it because i i am current with the nba but because i really like basketball not like playing basketball video games now there's a basketball game I can buy and play that's not just 2K, you know? Mm-hmm. And maybe that gets right. me to watch yeah. K and B, right? Maybe mm-hmm. I think this is fucking awesome. And so I watch K and B, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, no, because you're right. There isn't a lot of variety for sports games, even though they are really popular. The, like, they sell, like, yeah, the FIFA and the Maddens, they still sell really well, even though, like, there's minimal changes because they have, like, this casual market of people who actually just like the sport. Uh, so yeah, I think I agree that, yeah, a, a sport, you know, like I'm sure Mario, the, a lot of Mario sports games have done well because like, well, you know, here's something a little different and a little more fun and, uh, you know, also with the uh, recognizable characters and yeah. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, so I, I have one more, um, wishlist one if no one else has one, but I don't have any, uh, I don't think I have any. Okay. So this is one that exists. So I, it feels kind of cheap to say it cause it does exist. But it exists on the PSP, and I think it's about a time we get, like, a fucking PS5 one. Uh, where the fuck is my Kingdom Muso? Where? <laughs> Koei Tecmo, why do you not have... I know you have Dynasty Warriors. Give me Kingdom Warriors. Fucking please. Not like it'll get localized anyway. No, I don't care if it doesn't. <laughs> I will import that bitch, right? I'm going to import Gintama Rumble. I'm going to import the Gintama R- Muso. I don't give a fuck. I'll import the Kingdom one, too. It'd be fun as hell. Are you kidding me? Does the Gintama game come with like a package of literal shit? I hope so. God, I hope Gintama Rumble <laughs> does. Um, but no, like I want a fucking Kingdom Boost. So I want to run around his shin, swinging my glaive, taking people down. Just by because Kingdom is like almost set up. I feel as a manga. I mean, all of y'all, both both of y'all have read at least you know hundreds of chapters of it. It's mm-hmm. perfectly set up for a Dynasty Warriors type of game. Yeah, Because 90% sure. mm-hmm. of Kingdom is Shin running around swinging his glaive. And in one glaive swing, he cuts like 10 people in half. And then when you get to the battles between generals, those are the boss battles right there. It's already, like, yeah. it's it's literally, like, worked into, as a Muso into the way the manga just, like, tells its story. It's perfect yeah, for it. For sure. <laughs> And it did have one, but it was on the PSP, and it was like it only is like you play as Baby Shin when he's like a like, tiny little boy. Like he, I don't even think you even get to the point where Shin gets a glaive, so it's only Shin with like a sword. No, I want to play Shin as a cavalryman with the High Shin unit being like ten thousand members on my fucking sword, charging into battle with all of them behind me. That's what I fucking want. Ah! Koei Tecmo, please. I know what else you want. Hmm. B Stars Dating Sim. Oh my anyway, god, no. Lugosi, your toes? <laughs> so anyway, uh, should we change the topic to um, games or anime adapted from games, or do you want to just move on to Kanojo Um, 
so I actually, if we don't want to talk about anime adapted from games, there's another I, I topic. I'm struggling to think of any right now uh, to bring so up. Really, I, I have uh, one more thing. I get one more like kind of general topic. If none doesn't have one, that I think will cover both, and I think is kind of interesting as well. But I'll All wait right. to see if none. Um, so mm-hmm. I think that like it, it, this will also add into anime adapted from games. Um, but games that are made or. I don't want to say games that are made to look like anime because obviously, you know, when you, you know, they're made in Japan, a lot of the same, you know, you'll have yeah. character designers like with Astral Chain, the, the manga from um, Zetman, or, but like with Persona, right? Um, even stuff like Rampa, right? Has like the anime aesthetic and the anime art style. And so it's not a surprise that Persona gets an anime and these other things. But there is like a market, you know, for people. Like if, for example, and it's not a surprise that Persona 5 is the most popular Persona when anime is more popular now than it's ever been because Persona kind of, plays out like an anime you know mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah um, like it like especially with like the school um like you know in the, like in persona 4 golden like there's a very clear slice of life aspect with the school and, like going on vacations and hanging out with your friends and like forming bonds with like the 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 team in that game i don't know if they had a team and, and the investigation team is name. just in general yeah. jo- has has any of the staff like openly admitted the jojo influence because uh, uh like i don't know i i, I, I couldn't look say. i've seen some st- they seem to literally have stands, their stands no they so yeah, persona like... you have stands you're in your school uh you have your stands the, now the stands it's are called out in four. different ways it's in, just part four of jojo in uh <laughs> that's no, no no part persona four is literally part four listen yeah, okay <laughs> Krabsdorf, you're in a small country town, okay? You yeah, awaken your stand. Killer, and, there's yeah, a serial killer stuff. running around, and it's you and your friends who also awaken their stands go to fight them. It's literally yeah. part four. <laughs> it's literally part four. Right, so of course, it's like, of course this game is anime-like because it's literally like anime-inspired. Um, though I guess another example of that, because uh, obvi- I talked about it last week, uh, .hack GU, where it's like, it, yeah, it's a very anime-like game, like, it's just the way the characters, like, sometimes express in cutscenes and, you know, the overall tone of it, but it's also a franchise that is also partly, like, anime and manga and light novel, right? Like, it's 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 a giant mix of, you know, anime stuff, so, like, you know, I guess you were mentioning it, games and anime art styles, uh, so, right. like, um, yeah. yeah, another big one, uh, Danganronpa. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Which I'll, yeah, it's got its animated adaptation, which I watched a few episodes of, and was like, right. and it got as an anime sequel. Then I, I watched all of it. Well, but so but, I, but, you but love still, it. right? Like, and, and, and there's something even to be said just for you know certain. I mean, visual novels as a whole, because visual novels, a lot of them do bridge that line between mm-hmm. being you know something that's closer to anime, and I mean, you know, they all have like anime style designs, but it, except for uh, was it? Uh, I think it's. I'm gonna say this before someone says it in the comments. It's 428 Shibuya Scramble, I think is it uses re- it's it's a toku vn because it has oh. real life uh screenshots of people <laughs> um okay it's real life screenshots of people with words um so it's the toku okay. vn so the craft yeah. store vn but um <laughs> like you know a lot of them have uh like, you know it's these anime designs and you know some of them have more gameplay than others right so like phoenix right or or Darian rampa has more gameplay than like a little busters which has more gameplay than um you know uh uh fate stay night and like you know i i i go back and forth on on which i call um the new games, games of which, which i don't the ends yeah um uh, yeah because i do think there's a distinction and i have i no, yeah, i like, i have I would, a clear yeah, hard and clear rule for what i consider it um and maybe we'll talk about that in another episode if we do an episode on VNs, which I don't know if mm-hmm. we would because only I think Kraus and I have read any. No, no, no. Yeah, and even then, Ramp, I haven't. I think. I, and I haven't. Well, I, yeah. Even then, I still wouldn't say I've read that many. I I haven't either, but I've read a couple. So like I I have. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think VNs are, are are an interesting thing because a lot. I mean, so many of those, almost all of them, get anime, right? Um, and especially like because I would call Dong and Rampa a video game. I would call Phoenix Wright a video game. Um, mm-hmm. and those get anime, and I think that, you know, uh, some of those are a- another place to look at, and-, and even another, you know, avenue to look at for anime games, and, um, yeah, I mean, there's Persona, there's, uh, Genshin Impact is a game that is, you know, very, um, anime-inspired. I, I think what's interesting about VNs, too, compared to, like, games, is that, like, VNs, a little more often than, like, games will have kind of this different relationship with like anime like dongan like dongan rampa is like ha- literally has its sequel in the form of dongan rampa mm-hmm. 3 
was like a full blown game like per, like Persona would never like have its straight up sequel to like Persona Five or something be the mm-hmm. anime. Right, and like um, like I, yeah, I feel Persona like Five finishes the story in the game. Danganronpa finishes the story in Danganronpa Three, right? So I see what you mean, right? Uh, um, mm-hmm. yeah, and and so here's what the reason I wanted to bring up, you know, um, a- games that are made to look like anime, right? I don't know if you've ever done this. Um, but if you ever go to the anime tag on Steam, right, uh, obviously there's a bunch of anime games there, right? But there's a lot of games, some of them that I don't think should probably be there. Like, I don't think Tekken 7, or I would even say I don't mm. think Street Fighter Five either should be there. But there's a lot of games here that, like, I understand why Steam has them there, because I do think that they are very clearly, like, like there's, like, you know, like, especially, like, anime fighters, right? So Guilty Gear, almost anything Arxis does. And even the ones that aren't, you know, directly, like, fighters, they're called, like, the fighting game community calls them anime fighters. Guilty Gear's mm-hmm. not based off an anime. Um, uh, Under Night's not based off an anime. Uh, Blaze Blue's not based off an anime. But they're called anime fighters, right? Right. Well, things... and even, even Street Fighter and Tekken have animated adaptions, I'm sure. I know Street yeah. Fighter does. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. about Tekken for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me. Um... um and, and then there's things like Scarlet Nexus and and uh, Code Vein, like the the you know more recent mm-hmm. Bandai Namco. God games. Eater probably would if it, if it's, yeah. I, I don't know if there's any God Eater. God Eater does Steam, have but, uh, it does have uh, the tag. Yeah, it's there. Uh, yeah, and Scarlet Nexus especially comes to mind because the anime and the game came out at very close to each other, right? So that's just right. like and very recently, so that's just like right in my you know headspace, I guess. Yeah, uh, and and so I do think that there is like a much closer. Um, almost like a uh, relationship than I think some people will say, because there is like, you know, there are these games and, you know, I haven't played every game that's on that, you know, I see, or that, you know, I mentioned that. Cause like I played a little bit of code vein and didn't get super into it, but like, I'm sure there are games. I, 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 I am just going to say that I'm sure there are. Cause I, I don't know. And I mean, obviously there's persona, but not kind of that, but like, I'm sure there's games like even I haven't played that like are video games that use like anime, you know, designs and stuff. Um, and are fucking great and tell their own great story and have great gameplay mechanics, but still feel like, you know, the way an anime feels, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I do think that like, that's like an interesting thing where you have these games that are not necessarily anime, but very anime inspired. Right. And, um, are very clearly like potentially good. Wait, Bleach Brave Souls is on Steam? Is that the gotcha? Yes. Huh. What? <laughs> I just didn't know a mobile gotcha could be on Steam. That's insane, right? Like that. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess that does seem kind of weird. But uh, I mean, it does yeah. have like more gameplay than like some other gotchas do because there is like the whole walking around and like you know mm-hmm. pressing the pressing the action buttons and stuff. I feel like it could work a little bit more in terms of being on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh. And here's, I guess, the last thing um, about just anime games is, have you guys seen this MHA fan game? Just click through this because it has gameplay. There's a fan game. I'm sure it'll get taken out eventually of MHA that all it is right now that's available is essentially just running around in open world as different characters. But it actually looks kind of cool because like the way, like with the different characters, I I might download it and stream it at some point. Um, I'm sure now I said that people are going to want me to, but like... It, like, is super sick, and it's, like, you know, I, I was watching some stuff for it on TikTok, and it's, like, uh, you know, as Deku, you have, like, Deku's powers, but when you're Mirio, you activate your power, and you, like, sink into the ground and can't see anything, and you have, like, an air meter, and then you let go of that, and you, like, shoot up, you know what I mean? And um, mm-hmm. it's interesting that, like, their MHA is big enough now that someone's making a, a fan game of it. Uh, because they want to run around like an open world as these characters with their powers, and there isn't an MHA game that allows them to do that. Kind of reminds me of like a fan game that I played a little bit of, which was like the Attack on Titan tribute game. Yes, 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 um, yes, yes. The mobile one where it was like super fun. No, and you it wasn't like, a swing mobile around. One. Or not? The, sorry, I, not the was, mobile. Was, uh, the the browser game. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was the browser game. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, it was a pretty fun game. Like, you know, it doesn't like look the best, but like. It definitely does simulate the, you know, swinging around and, you know, slicing at a titan's neck. and even has, like, multiplayer and stuff. Um, and I no, think yeah, it has, I was like, a messaging thing it. in it, if I remember I remember correctly. playing one ages ago when it was new, and I don't know what... The Attack like, on Titan I, fan game? I, I looked, checked, and there's at least mul- there's at least two. Well, so the, I don't know which I, one I have a feeling. The original tribute is gone, 
And apparently they're working on a second one. Oh, that's like, funny. I'm clicking out. through this. Apparently you can like jump around as All Might and run out of like your like time as All Might and just you turn into fucking Toshinori. <laughs> um but no, yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely have a feeling we're all talking about the exact same Attack on Titan tribute game because okay. I, I watched Attack on Titan like when it came out and was super popular, uh, even though I wasn't super damn at the time, and I'm sure that we all played the same game. Yeah, no, when I remember it, it was like super simple visuals style. Yeah, like, and uh, all yeah. it was was like you were in like a small version of a, of a walled city swinging around trying to, yes. it's almost okay. like a high yeah. score game. How many Titans can you get before you get eaten? Right, and I I always remember trying to figure out how to play it. Well, I just like pop on the Attack on Titan soundtrack and all the action sound musics, and it was it was fun. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know how it, like I, I never paid attention to uh, much of Attack on Titan after you know I dropped it, so I, I don't know what the right. games are like or anything. Well, you know what I so. like about that game, and I don't know how the because I think it's made by Koei Tecmo, so it might be a Muso, but. What I liked about that game a lot is like an Attack on Titan fan game that I, I don't know if the newer game it does, but I don't think it would because I feel like only like a bro- browser fan game could do this. Is how fucking hard the Attack on Titan fan game was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you could just get your ass fucking beat and get eaten by a fucking Titan without killing any of them if you weren't paying attention. And I fucking loved that because playing that and it felt like, like okay, this is like the close to video game get to what it would be like to be like a, a member in like the, the Scout Corps. Right. This like is the game, fucking the hard. Is, yeah, the series is brutal and insanely like there's a high skill ceiling there. And, like, an actual game wouldn't do that because it wants to be accessible, right? And that game helped me almost feel it. You know what I mean? Like, that game helped me realize how fucking hard it would be to swing around and kill a Titan. Right, because it's easy to think, like, oh, man, yeah, these Titans, they sure are dumb. It should be easy to just kill them. And it's like, no, no, no. (laughs) No, this is hard as fuck. (laughs) Uh but yeah, I think I'm about done with the topic. Uh, though I'm sure there's more we can talk about. Also, we're over an hour and a half in, so yeah, I, I I'm good now. I, I I came in with like certain things I wanted to bring up, but uh, I'm good now because I, um, I brought them all up. Hmm. I mean, I guess one other thing that I just wanted to bring up really quickly was like the um because I I feel like somebody will mention it like Lunar or something. The like I don't know what the actual series of these games are called. But the first one's Naruto Rise of a Ninja, and the second one's Naruto the Broken Bond. And um, I Those think was super ones, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I well, often mentioned and those, cool about I those. Mentioned Western made. Did you? But... Yeah. I mentioned how uh, there were, when I was talking about how there were no Western made, I said that Ubisoft made some Naruto games. He might have still commented it because I said it really <laughs> offhand, but. Okay. Um, but yeah, they're like super cool in the sense that, like, you know, uh, it has a lot more of the running around as a ninja element in the game um, with, like, wow. actual environments that you're kind of, uh, you know, traversing. Um, and I don't think I didn't I never got that other that feel from any other Naruto game that I've played. I don't think it did that like the best that, that you could do it. But, um, you know, it's something that I'd, I'd want to see done again. Yeah, I mean, I'm clicking around, like, some gameplay of it, right? Which is something I've done for almost every game that individually has been mentioned, just to get an idea of, like, what it looks like. And this even just, like, in terms of, like, when he's, like, in a level and he's doing, like, level design stuff, like, looks the most like a Western-made video game. <laughs> just with Naruto. No, it does, because there is no, yeah, there no, are major yeah. differences um, between Western-made games and, and, and I mean, well, yeah, you, know, no, we you could say Eastern-made, but it, it's really yeah. Japanese-made games. Like when you look at it, it's like the the main place that make Japan is or games are the West, right? Um, you know, it's it's uh, America, Canada, France, uh, some other like smaller like alpha companies, and then really it's Japan. You know, there are some Chinese and Korean studios, but generally they make like things like Genshin and like these very free to play games, mobile games, stuff like that. In terms of like big, you know, sixty dollar games, it's generally either the West or Japan. And this looks like a Western game, just with Naruto, which is really interesting. Yeah, it's like, a, and like, you know, you can even like, there's more in terms of like leveling up your uh, HP and your chakra. And um, I just think there's like generally some interesting elements to the game. Um, and it, it is one that I like, I want to replay it the most, but I would have to like get an actual Xbox 360 because right. I, I can't really just emulate it. Yeah, um, but yeah, like I, I feel like this is one of the most interesting Naruto games to revisit. 
and it's the one that like I've played the least. I've only played each of the games once and never like revisited it or like super thought about it like when I was younger, but like thinking back it's like super cool looking. And you can even tell with like how the combat itself looks that it's like not made by the people who usually make anime games. Right. And I guess real quick, since this is a really broad topic, uh, if anyone in the comments wants to talk about like anime games they remember, like we didn't talk about any Bleach games. Like I'm sure there were several that got Western releases, but like that was never really our yeah. childhood, I think. So that was ne- nothing we particularly yeah, you, like, gravitated towards. Uh, if anyone wants to talk about any anime games um, that you played or, uh, or what you think would be cool that if they yeah. existed. Any uh, wishlist ones, please, please put them in the comments and uh, we'll talk about them. I would love to see... Um, more uh ideas because i'm sure there are ideas that we could even talk about next week you know like just in comments that we think are super cool that we just didn't even think about you know what mm-hmm. I mean? yeah but i also feel like yeah uh we should probably move on so uh definitely vindy how did you like uh kanajo oh my six? god oh my god <laughs> what a fucking anime dude holy shit all right <laughs> okay i fu- oh my god i actually think the scene where he's fucking talking to Milky Sama, this dad, and like Saki and uh, Nagisa are like so like they can tell just by looking at them, like she's gonna fall in love with this mother. The commentary made that scene. She's I agree. falling in love with him, and he's like doing like the 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 fucking Naoya shit, right? He's being himself. He's being a hero, and they're like, "Oh my fucking god, stop, please! She's gonna fall in love with you." And he just keeps going with it. I couldn't believe it. It was so fucking funny. I lost my shit. <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> I also just love that she's a fucking she's amaranth. It's so funny that she's a titty streamer. I love it to death. It makes me fucking chuckle every time. Um, her dad almost deleted her fucking channel. God. <laughs> let me let me go look. Uh, let me make sure there's nothing else in the episode I missed because I feel like episode six was very much the one thing. Right? It was he's trying to get her gone. Um, I mean, obviously she's yeah. fucking great. She's amazing. I love her. I love that he was talking to him and he's like, look. I might fall in love with her, so fucking stop me. There's also, she, like, punched, like, Milky Sama punched, like, ten, she punched him and the dad, like, five times that episode. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. She Now she's punching boys? Best girl clear, by far. Unreal. Uh, but, yeah, that's my thoughts on episode six is, it was, it was really good. It was probably, I mean, it was a great episode, uh, probably the least funny episode so far. Um, but it makes sense why, because it was, you know what I mean? Like it was, I still thought it was good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was still a great episode. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying, I don't think it was the worst episode so far. Um, it, it's probably one of my favorites. I just think it was like the least funny because it, it wasn't trying to be. So it was fine that it wasn't, mm-hmm. uh, whereas episode seven, <laughs> None, I love how episodes? like, oh. I love how Saki's mom is like. She knows Saki's horny and she's totally oh cool with God. it. Like she's she's such a she's bro. She's basically <laughs> trying to get her daughter laid. Like, I love it. That's literally what she's doing. And like <laughs> even by the end of the episode, she's like literally looking for more costumes. Yeah, it's really <laughs> funny. Oh uh, god. Um and yeah, Saki and the bunny girl outfit. Uh bunnies are made for breeding. And <laughs> well, even when Naya like Dude. grabs her boobs and on accident because he was trying to like stop the nip slip from happening she like hits him anyway it, like, like what she did, hits him but then the way she like giggles and her smile and the way she like goes upstairs <laughs> giggling about it <laughs> so fucking funny and so cute like oh my god and she's like <laughs> she's like now he has a pervert but like giggling to herself about she's it so happy so stupid and the entirety of the next day she's running around crying like she's so happy yeah she's been waiting the entire show for this basically and then Nagisa uh, is also into costume play. <laughs> oh my Why, god! Bindi? Why did you post this? <laughs> what are you? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? It's <laughs> you dodgy best buy. <laughs> <laughs> I was just testing my hard drive's he's capabilities. Asking, yeah, he's asking if you need the Geek Squad to help you install your new Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
<laughs> no, I fucking love the maid costume shit. It was so funny. Uh, I love how, like, there was the part where they got super into it, and they just kept saying, like, uh, she kept calling him master, and he kept calling her by her name, and they were just, like, sitting on the floor doing that for, I assume, <laughs> hours until they stopped. <laughs> Uh, and then later, she accidentally called him master, and Saki like bird, and they're like they're letting their fetishes out into the open, and oh no, <laughs> they're so uh. stupid. Uh, and then on the roof, it was funny where now you just start stripping, and he's just like, "I'll let you take embarrassing photos of me, even I'll even cross dress." Oh and it's like, "What God. the fuck just happened? What are you doing?" And that entire <laughs> scene, she's just liking him more and more and more. <laughs> I like how nobody brought up that he just was carrying. He happened to carry around that hair with him. <laughs> <laughs> he went to school prepared. He knew it was coming. Oh my god! Um, also, she just like literally fell over and got back up, and it wasn't addressed at all. It just yeah, like, I love like, that, like she's like <laughs> lying there. It's I was like, gonna say, that's the only thing they showed us. Where I was like, it'll show like the scene where like it hits her heart and it's too much for her and she falls over and then it cuts and she's just actually laying on the floor and stands up <laughs> and he just doesn't say anything about it. He's just like, yeah, okay. <laughs> They're so stupid. Um, also, I thought it was funny at the end because uh, uh, Saki, well, she uses the word gunu, which is the word for milk. So Saki is also calling her milky. Which I thought oh was funny because that's Let's like go. that's your nickname for her, but then it's like now the show is she's using it to call her a titty monster, and uh, so I thought that was funny. Yeah. Um, so basically, what you've just told me is I'm perfectly comfortable just calling her Milky. This Sama show only. is like literally in your brain is the thing. Like you and this author are like spiritually connected across the sea. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> Have you seen that? Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna deer all the episode for a second. Have you seen that TikTok where the guy is? Uh, Hold on, let me find this TikTok. Uh, fucking hell. Uh, keep talking, keep talking. I'm gonna find it. What else did you like about the episode nine? Um, I mean, I I like that Naya is still generally like scream like, even though they're on the roof alone, he's still like <laughs> screaming so that like <laughs> he's so <laughs> stupid. Anybody could just listen in on them, and I think um Saki was listening on them too, um. Yeah, it was it was funny, and I love his like I don't know what that theme is called, but it like it it's like I don't know from the music you mean or mm-hmm. yeah, it's like a theme that plays every time that like Nalia is like being super brutally <laughs> honest. Uh, no, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the this is the chick I was talking about. Uh, you just said spiritually connect connected. That made me think of this. There is no such thing as a coincidence. The fact that you're watching this video means you're energetically aligned with me and this message. Your thoughts create your reality. But you already knew that. Yet, you still live life that you dread. When you visualize your dream life, you unconsciously believe that it is unrealistic. Uh, no you just made me think of that but the other thing i was gonna say the last thing i have to say about the episode is the quote of the episode is with fucking she's like do you like this uh when she when nagi says in the maid outfit and nagi and now he just goes try calling me master <laughs> just like quietly so <laughs> fucking funny i lost it <laughs> he's so into it yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we going to go to the weekly roundup now that Crash is yeah, broken? Sure. <laughs> I don't know why they let me laugh so much. All right, go ahead, then. Um, I guess I'll just talk about Ava since I, I rewatched it, uh, I think, in like three or four days. Because um, I wanted to finish it fast since I I still have to watch End of Ava and the rebuilds. Um, I liked it more. Um, it's not like a whole bunch more but um i really appreciated the stuff towards the end um like the last episodes were like basically like analyzing all the characters like <laughs> yeah on video essay. <laughs> um. 
Um, and I, I really like the part where they pointed out how there's multiple versions of Shinji that live inside of like everyone he's met and they're all the true Shin- Shinji. And, you know, I do like how each of those Shinjis that gets created by the, by the people he knows is like very clearly incorporated in part of him. Cause like at the beginning of the show, um, you know, Shinji isn't like, he's, you know, he's like super reserved and he's like not really expressing himself much at all like for the most part except for like you know when he like has that outburst at the the, the first episode when um which McCall when he's asked to pilot the Ava but other than that um he's generally like kind of trying to avoid interacting with other people but you can tell like you know um Misato having like expectations of him and him like getting comfortable being around her and stuff um makes him like speak his mind more And, like, you know, when, like, Asuka shows up, he starts being more like a a regular teenager where he's, like, arguing with her a lot. And he's, you know, and, like, when he has friends, he he, he becomes even more relaxed and kind of, like, um, goes along with their, like, I guess, idiocy. Because, like, they're they're literally called the idiot trio. Um, Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, and, like, he's... And since he gets used to his life of being, like, a pilot of the Ava, he's, like, um, you know, even when, uh, whatchamacallit, Misato brings him out to see Asuka when she's coming, he's, like, stretching, and he's, like, um, he's, he's playing around with his friends, and, like, you can clearly tell he's, like, changing, and so, like, all, like, you know, at, at the end where they're telling him there's all these Shinjis, and you, you could see all that, like, all that become him, um, which I, you know, I thought it was super cool. Um, I also generally um, thought the last five or so episodes um, were, you know, pretty cool looking. Um, I really, like, I, I think people talk about the last two particularly as, like, it's like they think that, you know, um, because of, like, because of Anno running out of time, that's why they look the way they do. And, like, that could be true, but I still think they look, like, you know, super cool and interesting. I liked seeing the, like, like seeing Shinji, like, turn into, like, a draw, like, more clearly of a drawing. And, like, you know, you can clearly see the marker and the ink. And I think, you know, in that kind of way, as he's, like, um, you know, facing himself and facing what he is, I think it's a really like cool and interesting representation of him as he's like, like basically re-examining himself. Um, And, you know, uh, I think I like Asuka a little bit more than I did before. Um, I didn't dislike her or anything, but um, it's really like, I think it's really fun to see Shinji and Asuka interact. And like, I really like the episode where, um, they're like, you know, they have to sync, like they have to synchronize because they have to take <laughs> out that enemy that splits itself in two and they need to hit the cores at the same time. So like throughout the episode, they're, you know, literally playing that like uh, dancing. dancing. Yeah. I remember like, that it's, it's a really fun episode. Uh, I really liked it. Um, mm-hmm. well, and, you know, I am. What were you going to say? Oh, no, no, no. Keep going. Keep going. I, didn't, I, wasn't I am interested in like seeing uh, End of Ava again because. You know, even though I, I like those last two episodes, I, I can see how they leave something to be desired in a sense, just because you do know how Shinji's life is going to be like, you do know that Shinji at the end decides to, you know, try to like himself and try to recognize sin- that since there's multiple versions of him, there's other like other Shinjis who have who have the possibility of having value outside of being an Ava pilot since he was like really worried about like this is the only value I have but since there's so many Shinjis uh you know that doesn't necessarily have to be true like he 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 says that like you know there could even be a Shinji who isn't an Ava pilot um which was interesting uh fuck you (laughs) Vendy but like But, like, I guess the thing about the end of the show is that you don't really know what, like, what happens with Asuka. Like, like she's just, like, you know, yeah, she's it, just kind of, like, so mentally much on fucked. Shinji that you don't really know. <laughs> and it, it also, like, it, it shows you brief flashes of, of like, Misato and um, Ritsuko, but, like, 
what the fuck happened? You don't actually know, right? Yeah. Uh, like, I think that even if Ava never got, like, extra stuff other than the TV series, I think it could be cool and good in its own right and, like, satisfying even. Because, like, I do think certain series are able to do, like, a purposeful, like, you don't know what happens at the end, but, you like, it still instills this sense of hope and, like, sense of, like, you know they'll be all right and it, it almost doesn't matter what happens, kind of. Because, like, you know, like, Shinji is bad like he is trying to like himself and he is trying to uh see that these other like the reality he made for himself isn't like the true reality i guess and there's more there's more outside of him like out there's more out there's more things he can find outside of his own like observations um Mm -hmm. so like i i do think it has like it it didn't like it, it has its own thing even if you like only ever had the tv series but i am interested in seeing how um end of ava will do the other characters and i don't really remember that much about it for some reason so well i remember um, all i remember is that you were just a little confused about like <laughs> the continuity i guess which kind of makes sense yeah. because like the last two episodes take place like in the middle of the second half of end of ava at the specific point where it gets you know we- so it's like you know and yeah you weren't uh yeah, I, just I mean, remember, yeah, I, yeah, I think I was just like watching it kind of in a in a dumb way because like I, I didn't really like after I finished uh, the TV series, I went right into End of Ava. I didn't really look at anything about it or like really mm-hmm. like um, like I just clicked on it like right after. And I guess for some reason, I just missed the parts where um, it would flash yes. cards to say this is episode 25. And this is episode 26. Right, where it establishes that it takes place mm. right after 24, right? So, like, uh, and so, like, when I was watching End of Ava, I was just watching it. I was like, what? why is this repeating? Like, why is why is Shinji doing this again? And it was, like, a little frustrating, I guess. Right, how, and he finished so, like, his I character paused, arc, why is was, he sad boy again? <laughs> yeah, so. I paused at some point in the movie, and I was like, okay, what's going on? And I, like, read the description. I was like, oh... And so, and so, like, you know, even though I did, like, have that correction before I finished the movie, I still watched a significant amount of it while thinking of it a certain type of way to where it's just, like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, like, just suddenly, like, fully be able to appreciate it if I uh, already wasn't into it from, like, how I was watching before. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you going to watch the rebuilds after that, after, at some point afterwards? Because especially now that the last one is out. I mean, yeah, I am going to. Okay. Cool. Oh, is that why yeah, you that's mostly why it was... first... oh, okay. yeah that makes sense yeah i should have figured Duh. <laughs> cool uh i don't know when i'll get around to rewatching the rebuilds right. but uh ava's good so this man didn't tell me to do this but i'm gonna throw him under the bus all right just so all of y'all know uh i'm gonna give what the what's weekly roundup because i know if he was here this is what he'd give uh he watched ava 3.0 plus 1.0 and gave it a nine that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> he loves what the fuck what loves Ava now <laughs> yeah i i kept telling him that ava was his favorite thing and that it was gonna be on his four by four and that he loved it and he told me to stop so uh yeah i i do uh, hope it's like i i mean i hope when i watch uh three three point oh plus one point oh um i do really like it because no i've heard you know, mostly, even though i appreciate the yeah. tv series more um, you know, it's, it's still only at a seven for me personally. So, um, I would, mm-hmm. I would be interested in like the challenge for the rebuilds to, uh, make me like Ava more. Cause you know, I did want to like it a lot more. Um, so yeah, it'd be cool to see. Yeah. And I've heard that the new rebuild movie <laughs> kind of gives the series a bit more closure. So, uh, I don't know. Sounds cool. I'll, I'll watch it eventually. I'm sure. But, uh. Is that all you have to say on Ava for now? Uh, hmm. I guess Masato is the best girl. Uh, You're so is, fucking smart. Oh truth. my god, come here and give me a kiss. <laughs> Isn't fucking he? Hell. <laughs> no, not Masato, I mean, Misato. I mean, I will say I do... Like, Asuka's interesting. I, like, I'd like i still say she's one of the more... Like, especially, like, I think episode 19, that gives her, like, all of her context. Like, I, I really like that episode. And, uh, it, you know, I, I like Asuka, but, you know... Misato. But Misato's yeah. so hot. <laughs> and there's literally like a two minute sex scene where it's just sex noise and you're looking at alarm clock. <laughs> Ava's built different. That's what I'll say. Uh, 
Yeah. So is it my All turn right. now? Yeah, I'm all about uh, or how good movies for a change. Yeah, so I, uh, I, I, so just to preface this, I finished a lot of things in the last week because I didn't have internet, and so I prepared ahead by downloading a lot of things. I'll give a couple of the things I finished that I'm not going to talk about here that I'm not also going to talk about in other facets on the Weeb Club. Um, I, uh, I watched, I fin- I finished Phase Two of the MCU. Um, I finished Arkham City. I finished Dead Space, I finished The Boys Season 1, and I finished Mario 3D Worlds. Maybe I'll come back to those later. But today I did a little thing uh, where I sat down and watched the Snyder Cut. Um, And so with that, I'm current on the DCEU. So if you wanted to split the DCEU into phases, like how Marvel has it, Phase 1 would very clearly be uh, Man of Steel through uh, the Justice League. Um... Very clearly as well, and I'll get to that when I talk more about the Snyder Cut, uh, Phase 2 is um, Aquaman through, uh, currently is the Suicide Squad. Uh, the mo- the biggest surprise to me was that Phase 2 of the, the DCEU is actually fucking great. Um, there's one movie I don't like in it. Um, Wait, hold on. Qu- question real quick. Um, yeah. Is the DC, like what phase is the DCU in currently? Uh, I would probably st- say still two. There hasn't been a team of movie or anything. Oh, okay. I-, I would say it's either in phase two or it's in it's fucking dead because like uh, it's not dead because <laughs> okay. uh, Aquaman sequels coming out next year. Okay. Uh, DCEU Flash movies coming out next year, and I think okay. Black Adam's also DC. I guess I just thought it's kind of weird that because they're st- they're doing like Joker and uh, yeah the, the other Batman movie where it's like they're here they're doing these live action DC movies that aren't in the continuity yeah for the DCEU, they're they're well so. and they're in a really weird spot and I'll I'll get to that but like just to go through some of the movies, um Aquaman's really fun I enjoy it a lot uh Jason Momoa is a fucking hero and Aquaman is a goddamn himbo okay <laughs> here here's the mo- here's the thing I'll tell you about Aquaman so you can understand how funny it is. And how just entertaining it is. So, okay. I'll, I'll set up a classic superhero fight scene moment for you. Okay? I try to picture it in your mind and tell me what the general outcome is, uh, of this is. Okay? So, there's a fight going on in a city. Okay? And part of that is a church that has a bell on top of a tower gets, like, destroyed. And the bell is falling and about to hit a little girl. And our superhero sees the bell about to hit this little girl. Normally, what does a superhero do? Save the girl. He saves the girl, right? So he he jumps in front of the girl. He he either grabs the girl out of the way or will, like, hold the bell and set it down, right? That's normally what he would do, right? Aquaman shoulder tackles the bell like he's a fucking linebacker. <laughs> like, he just goes <laughs> flying through the air at, like, Mach 10 and hits the bell into another building with his shoulder. It's insane. It's fucking hilarious, and I love it. Uh, And that's just how all of Aquaman is. I think Jason Momoa is, like, actually just a really charismatic actor. I think he's really good as Aquaman. Um, the movie's like a sci-fi movie, just instead of in space, it's underwater. Uh, it's really fun. I enjoy it. It's like a seven, maybe an eight, you know, maybe like the average MCU movie level. Uh, Shazam was really fucking good. Um, I'm sure people remember when Shazam came out, everyone's talking about how good it is. Shazam's really fucking good. Uh, I like Shazam a lot. Um, it's funny. Uh, it does a lot of things really well. Uh, just really fun movie. Really good. Um, Birds of Prey is enjoyable. Uh, I didn't love it, but I thought it was fine. Um, I could see a girl really liking the movie more than I could. I think there, you know, might be some things, you know, I, I just don't fully love about it because it is very much like a, a movie about um, female empowerment. Um, because it's about how Harley Quinn and the Joker are broken up, and she's trying to become her own person, right? And separate herself from always needing a man is uh, what the movie's kind of about. Oh, um, it's kind I of interesting it. that the uh, newer cartoon series also does that. The yeah. Harley Quinn show. I do like that Harley Quinn as a character is starting to separate from the Joker more. I think it's it's actually really cool. Um, and I, I think Birds of Prey was fun. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good time. I think Margot Robbie is really, really good as Harley Quinn. And I'll get to that in, in two movies. Wonder Woman 1984 is the only bad movie in Phase 2 of the DCEU. Fucking dog shit. It was boring. I didn't like it. Um, then was The Suicide Squad. <laughs> Well, that can technically came out very recently, right? Yeah. You just watched it first? I watched it before the Snyder Cut because I, I didn't have four hours to watch the Snyder Cut, so I watched it. But I, I'm going in the order I watched them in. Because, like, I'll get to how the Snyder Cut is just not a part of the DCEU, kind of. Like, it's just not. Okay. Because um, the DCEU's already gone past it and just doesn't care about it. 
Uh, it was very much made outside of it as like an alternate timeline it could have gone on that I wish it had. Even though The Suicide Squad could legitimately be one of my favorite movies. Um, it has, okay, it's the most Vindy movie of all time. <laughs> it has a friendship shark man uh, who speaks in like two word sentences and is a fucking hero and a goat. And I thought he was going to die for a second and I almost cried. Okay. Um, it has John Cena and it has a girl whose superpower is literally that she controls rats down to the point where one of her rats named Sebastian drinks alcohol and is an alcoholic. <laughs> I can't believe it. I was floored. I didn't know your name was Sebastian, your real life actual name. When it happened. I just, I couldn't believe what I just saw in this fucking movie. Um, it's super funny, super good, great, better action than the Guardians movies. Uh, which I feel fine mentioning him because James Gunn directed both. Um, I think Harley Qu or Margot Robbie kills it as Harley Quinn. She's so good as the character, so great in the movie. Um, has a great action scene, just good funny lines from almost the entire cast. Um, really, really, really solid movie. Uh, I definitely recommend it. Um, if you want as much context as humanly possible, uh, you need to watch the first Suicide Squad movie and Birds of Prey. Um, the problem is the first Suicide Squad's terrible. Birds of Prey is good, and the really the only things that you get from both of those is the premise of the Suicide Squad and like how they work and like kind of Which, what's going on. Which, if you with already, them. if you, I mean, I guess I feel like what might be more important is Harley Quinn's character arc. Is that is it important for that at all? Uh, or? so there's some of that. So, uh, so uh, part of it is is just the the, the 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 premise of the Suicide Squad, right? That they're they're. Um, well, like that might, I was going to say, because like, you don't need to watch the movie for that. If you just like know right, the Suicide right, right. Squad. Right? Um, so. yeah. And then there's some like small character things like Harley has a relationship with both Rick flag and Harley has a relationship with captain boomerang. Um, but yeah, then outside of the, and Harley Quinn's character arc doesn't matter that much. That's what birds of prey is for is Harley Quinn's character. Okay. Arc. Because it actually does matter in suicide squad that she's broken up with the Joker and, um, kind of some stuff uh, around that uh, is important to kind of uh, the, the plot events and how the Suicide Squad uh, plays out. Um, so, you know, uh, that's how that goes. But I fucking loved the Suicide Squad. Super fun movie. I would recommend it to anyone. Uh, just legitimately a funny, enjoyable, great movie. Uh, I'll mention Joker really quickly. I thought Joker was good. Didn't love it, but I, I thought it was really good. Uh, it, it was enjoyable. Um I think Joaquin Phoenix did a really good job, and there were some things I thought were really interesting, especially the idea that is kind of hinted at, where it's that um, Joaquin Phoenix's character isn't actually the Joker that uh, Batman fights, uh, but more so Joaquin Phoenix and what he did in the movie, um, which is why I ended up being okay with the fact that the Joker was like a named character who we knew all about his backstory and stuff, is this idea that uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Arthur and that, that character inspired the joker that, that, that fights batman right um, like he he became a symbol that people rallied around yes. because they you know agreed with like you know that sort of nihilism right so, uh, uh kind of it, it it kind of is a thing where he ended up creating a movement he didn't mean to create because he he killed some guys on a train who were one percenters but he wasn't trying to say kill the rich what he was really trying to do was defend himself and then you know he did definitely execute a guy who he didn't need to kill and he also shouldn't have had a gun because he had been in a mental institution. But um, it was like he killed them, but because they were one percenters, then a whole thing came up about how it was a clown trying to kill the rich. Um, and then he very much is, is, is against the whole society that is looking down on people and hurting people below them. Um, and he becomes this symbol for these riots and a symbol that then the Joker uh, takes on later on. Because uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character is like old as shit in the movie. He's like 40 in his 40s, right? Uh, and Batman's like a little kid. Like he's like eight nine maybe ten right so it just wouldn't make sense for that to be the same joker the batman fights and i actually really liked that mm -hmm. uh no, and yeah, then and i do like the idea because like you know the whole thing with the joker is he's like this character he doesn't have a real identity right he is almost more of like a force of nature and like having the like yeah I, I it would be really cool to like follow up with the joker with like or you know i i can see that being a really cool ex a way to do the joker like in a batman mythos is again more of like so an identity that people take on, sort of, right? Yeah. Uh, so, um, which would be neat, but uh, you know, so yeah, I, you know, like think about that idea. Like, obviously, the movies, I, I yeah, I like in its own context, but uh, 
you know, think about it, like trying to connect it to the DCEU, if like if they were going to, like that way it well, makes sense, I guess. Even outside of the, the DCEU, uh, uh, I think just on its own, the movie just almost makes like I, I just when you watch that movie, it's like that can't be the Joker that fights Batman. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, uh, he's just too old. Um, and then the the other movie, uh, then the one that I watched today was the Snyder Cut, which uh, I fucking loved. Actually, I was. I was expecting to watch, like, I like to be completely honest, right? I was expecting to watch the Snyder Cut and be like, yeah, it blows Joss Whedon's Justice League out of the park. It's a six. I'd give it, like, an eight. Um, okay. It's really fucking good. Uh, I might... Well, that's I actually re- shocking because you like it more than, like, the other Snyder movies as well, right? Like... Oh, my uh, God. The other Snyder... Well, the other Snyder movies are bad. Like, I, I actually think one of the most interesting parts about the Snyder Cut is that he got better. Like, even from Man of Steel to Batman v Superman, even though I think Batman v Superman is worse, that's just because he does Batman real dirty in that movie. Um, but there are, like, aspects of, like, that make it very clear that, like, Zack Snyder, throughout the entire thing, was, like, listening to what people who cared about these characters were saying and was trying to take those ideas, right, and move with them. Um, okay. In the I Snyder Cut, you mean? I liked, yeah. I liked Ben Affleck Batman, Crowd Store. <gasps> and you know what's even worse? Jared Leto Joker had a scene I thought was good. I could not fucking believe it, okay? That should tell you the level of quality this movie's fucking on. It's actually unreal, okay? Um, so not even to get into why I liked Ben Affleck Batman, because I, I want to save that for a second. So the biggest thing that, like, blew my mind about this movie is that, um, so in, in the original Justice League, right, uh, Cyborg is like a non-entity. He could not be in that movie, and I don't think anything would change. Okay? Mm -hmm. He is like, even inside the Justice League, probably top three most important characters to the Snyder Cut. He has probably, I would say he has maybe 10 minutes of like footage dedicated to him in the Joss Whedon Cut. He's got a good 40 minutes to an hour um, about him and his character arc in the Snyder Cut. Okay. Uh, stuff about his backstory, stuff about his relationship with his dad in the epilogue, um, where it's uh, it's like um, going over, you know, everything that happened, and like it's showing all the heroes and everyone as they're trying to move on with their lives and what they're doing after the events of the movie to continue on being a hero and stuff. Uh, the background voicing is stuff that Cyborg's dad is saying to him. Okay. Like, that's the level of importance that this guy has to the movie. So it's not a surprise that the actor, I think it's it's Ray something, um, went onto Twitter when the Joss Whedon cut came out. I was like, yeah, the, he butchered my character. Because his character did get fucking butchered. Like, mm-hmm. he has, like, this, like, good character arc and this good character in the Snyder Cut that's, like, really fucking great that just gets completely cut from the Joss Whedon version. Um, and it's really sad. A- another example of, like, how just dirty he got done is that, like, uh, and this goes for Aquaman as well. In the Joss Whedon version, Aquaman's kind of a dick to Cyborg. Like, okay. they have, like, one interaction. Aquaman's a fucking dick. In the Snyder Cut, uh, there's multiple lines of Aquaman mentioning that he feels bad for Cyborg. And, like, he's very, like, um, sympathetic to what Cyborg went through. And also, they kind of have, like, a, a friendship and, like, a whole bro thing going on um, as okay. it goes. Uh, the Flash, Ezra Miller's Flash, is way better when he doesn't have the really, really bad Joss Whedon lines. Like, there are some lines <laughs> No, he definitely seems both. like the comedy relief kind of, he like, is. you know, yeah. So, um, Joss, of course, yeah, the Whedon cut is going to lead into is. that. Uh, but, like, he like there's one line where he's talking about how he has to eat a lot of calories because he moves really fast. He calls himself a snack hole because he's a black hole for snacks. That's in both. But it's fine in the, in the, the Zack Snyder Justice League because you didn't have this really terrible brunch line five minutes before, right? So, like, it's fine that he has his occasional comic relief lines. And he had a, he had two moments in the movie that made me tear up. The Flash did. Uh, um, okay. There was one where, like, in the climax... Because the climax... The, the, the last hour of the, the Snyder Cut is essentially, like... So, okay. So, the way that, like, it's structured almost is that um, the first, like, three hours of the Snyder Cut or the first, like, hour and a half of Justice League, but the, Joss, the theatrical cut... Uh, basically cuts and takes and then adds in really bad scenes and all of that, right? The last hour of the Snyder cuts, the climax, and that's the last 30 minutes um, of the, the theatrical cut, completely different. Here's how different they are. The clothes that Batman and Superman are wearing are different in each. So the entire okay. last 30 minutes of the theatrical cut were all reshoots because the actual 
Snyder Cut, you couldn't have done without dedicating an hour to it. Because it's like this intricate plan with a lot going on um, that like also relies on like the villain's backstory that's not in the theatrical cut. I was about to ask about cut. Steppenwolf, yeah. Cause Steppenwolf he's like, has a backstory. He has he... reasons for what he's doing. And like you actually understand that like like dark sides in it and like you understand who dark side is um there's a wonder woman fight scene that's in the first 10, 15 20 minutes of the theatrical cut uh that's like bad like it's shot p- terribly phenomenal action scene in the snyder cut i actually really like it it's like a really fun high high paced action scene that like is really fucking good um uh, it just it, it blew my mind how like every single thing was just better in the snyder cut but even on top of that, the Snyder Cut was, like, a really good movie. Where, like, the Snyder Cut, like, had a cohesive, like, theme to it that, like, I could even tie back into Man of Steel and Batman versus Superman. Um, that, like, I liked because it's all about, like, unity. And so there's a lot of scenes of Diana as an Amazonian talking to uh, Aquaman as, as an Atlantean about how, like, the two cultures hate each other, but now they're working together. And how, like, because they're working t- together also with, you know, uh, a Kryptonian and with Batman... Uh, who represents, you know, just, like, normal people. Like, that's how they're able to stop Steppenwolf because there's, like, this unity uh, among all the people on Earth that even ties into the idea of, like, the Justice League that I think is, like, really good. Um, Yeah, the last hour is, like, great, and, like, the Flash has, like, a moment in, like, the climax because, like, uh, I I don't want to get too into spoilers, but essentially, like, it's actually up to the Flash to, like, save, save the day at the end. Uh, and the moment where, like, he realizes that's, like, really good because for a lot of the movie, he's, like, very tense and doesn't really know what to do or how to handle things. And then, like, when he finally has that moment where, like, he becomes, like, a, a full-on hero um, is really good. Uh, Question. Uh, yeah. Who is, like, in the uh, Josh Wheaton cut, uh, who's, like, the hero at the end of that one? Like Superman. Because, okay. Yeah, I figured if I used to. In, like in that. the theatrical cut, because there's a whole part in the movie where they have to bring. Because at the end of Batman vs. Superman, Superman dies. Um, so there's a whole point in both. And the conversation is so much better in the Snyder cut, obviously. But like, there's a point where they like realize, like, look, we can't stop stepping without Superman. We have to bring him back, right? Um, no, I remember and, hearing that with the other, with the, the, if, yeah, the theme of unity even regarding the Whedon cut is that, like, Superman, they, everyone saves Superman, but Superman just say, beat Steppenwolf alone, I guess. Yeah, uh, so the, the final Steppenwolf fight in, in, uh, the, the theatrical version is Superman goes off with Lois Lane, uh, after he gets revived because he's, like, he's kind of in a state. Um, and Lois Lane tells him, it, it's so bad because Lois Lane's like, Superman! you should go help your friends. And he's like, okay. And then he goes and does it and he like beats Steppenwolf in one hit, right? <laughs> in the Snyder cut, Superman's like in the field with Lois Lane and, and his mom comes up and he, he looks at both of them. He's like, look, I know you guys are worried about me, but they brought me back for a reason. And I have to go see what that reason is. Um, and so Superman, like thinking about the people that brought him back and, and, and his like duty to humanity is what gets him to actually go, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, an actual Superman reason to do it. Like, he knows yeah. it on his own. <laughs> and right, uh, okay. and so he goes, and he's there. And, um, and like, even, like, when they beat Steppenwolf. So, like, th- there's a whole thing with the Mother Boxes and a whole thing. But, like, when they actually beat Steppenwolf, like, to beat Steppenwolf and, like, to kill... Because they, they kill him. Uh, but it's fine because it was the three that uh, I'm large... Uh, really, the two that actually, like, killed him, killed him. Are the two I'm pretty okay with killing? It's Aquaman and, and Wonder Woman. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when you were. They up. they <laughs> they can kill people. I'm fine with that. Aquaman uses a fucking trident, and Wonder Woman has a sword. You're gonna tell me they don't kill people? Um, but like, it, it's Aquaman, Superman, and uh Wonder Woman that kill him. So it's like a three person attack. There's a bunch more combo moves in all the fights. The fights are just shot better, but like even outside of that, it's like in the fights against Steppenwolf and against other things. They're working together a lot. Not before they all, like, kind of come together with them. There's this really cool thing as well in the movie where it's, like, in multiple points uh, or, like, action scenes, they try to come up with a plan, but not everyone's on the same page, and so the plan doesn't work, you know, perfectly according to action. And it's so blatant with the two because as they're going into the last fight, they come up with a plan, and one of them, I don't remember who it was, says, oh, finally, we have a plan. And it's just, like, hammering home that, like, because they're finally working together and there's unity between them and they have this plan that, like, they're able to succeed, Right? Um, it's really, like, good. Like, it, it, it's just, a, like, a good movie. I, I like Ben Affleck's Batman because there's, like, a lot of moments 
where he's talking about it and it's like he's normally like you know batman's like this cold logical guy and he keeps doing things that like alfred's like dude this like doesn't make any sense like you don't know if it's gonna work and he keeps telling alfred like look it's about faith right i have faith in superman um and i have faith that he's gonna be the person that uh we need him to be and like that's fucking good like i like that um and like that made me like ben affleck's batman and like even the idea that like he even like is trying to with a large part of the movie atone for how he was in batman versus superman i don't think it makes batman versus superman better because i still think that you know as a character i don't agree with batman ever doing the things as like the symbol that batman stands for doing what he did but i can understand that like now you're trying to have this thing where batman's trying to atone for what he did and, and it ends up with if i look at just the snyder cut i like batman um and it was just like really fun and good and like it was four hours but i wasn't bored like mm -hmm. i sat there and watched the movie for four hours and at the end of it i was like yeah like it, it i mean obviously it's four hours so there's a lot that happens and it does i mean it probably feels like a four-hour movie but it wasn't like it was four hours and after two hours i was done and just wanted to turn it off but i had to sit there for two more <laughs> it was like it was four hours long but right it, like it, when you were watching avengers and you were checking the time cut every five minutes because it's like how does this movie still have this long left <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I checked the time once in, in the Snyder Cut, and the only reason I checked the time was because I wanted to see what time the climax started. Okay, gotcha. So I had an idea compared to the, mm -hmm. the theatrical cut, if that makes sense. Like, that was yeah, the only reason sense. I ever checked the time was like, okay, um, you know, I know roughly around in the, in the theatrical cut what, what was going on, so, like, you know, how does the timing compare? Uh. But yeah, and the worst part about the, the the Snyder Cut and why I almost can't recommend it is because you have to watch Man of Steel. At minimum, you have to watch Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman before because this movie is a sequel to those. That's what I was going to ask is like two things. is like one, was it worth it to go through the DCEU at the end of the day? And two, uh, do you have like a ideal DCEU watch order? Uh, so here's that... the thing. Um, okay, so... I will say currently, and depending on how the, the, the later DCEU movies turn out, but if they're if, if it's still an upward trend like I'm hoping, if you're okay with sitting through three bad movies, maybe four, um, I would say it's, it's probably worth it. Because the good movies are really good, I actually think. Um, but you do have to sit through some, some fucking stinkers. Uh, I would say overall, the DCEU is like overall positive for me now. I'm happy I watched it all. <laughs> like, no, like actually. Um, no, I know. It's just funny to hear you to like talking about, like remembering you talk about it a few weeks ago when you finished phase one and now hearing you talk about it having caught up to phase two. <laughs> and it's like yeah, night it's and day. It's insane. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand how it happened, but I'm not going to complain about it. Um, <laughs> So I would say the bare minimum, like if you just want, if, if what I'm saying about the Snyder Cut really interests you. Look, because yeah, going off what you said, it sounds like the most interesting movies are The Suicide Squad, the newer one, and uh, Snyder Cut of Justice League. So yes, like um, uh, obviously Shazam excluding is, Joker, because that's not. Yeah. Uh, um, I would say Shazam is probably like, I probably like Shazam as much as the Snyder Cut, maybe a little bit more, but. Uh, I would understand, like, it's probably not as interesting, it's just a good superhero movie. Um, like, it's just a good movie, uh, in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say, like, if you just want to watch the Snyder Cut, nothing else. You can get away with doing just Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, or the Snyder Cut. Uh, there's some stuff you'll miss from not watching Wonder Woman, but it's not the end of the world. Um... If you want to really go through it and, like, see well, everything... Well, and I guess the other thing about that is that Wonder Woman is, like, two-thirds of it is perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then that last third... I, that's also true with Wonder Woman, is that two-thirds of it's pretty good. It's just the last third that's bad. So you could even watch Wonder Woman as well. No, I, um, I thought I said Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I know. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm saying you can not watch Wonder Woman and watch the Snyder Cut and be fine. Uh, if you're really interested in the difference between the Joss Whedon Justice League and um, the Snyder Cut, I actually think at that point you got to watch everything. And the only reason is because it really almost like the, the, the worst part about the Snyder Cut for me now is that the DCEU has gone in a completely different direction, right? The DCEU is in a situation where Ben Affleck's not Batman anymore. Henry Cavill's not Superman. Um, I don't know about, I think his name's Ray Fisher. Uh, Ray, it's Ray something. Hold on. Uh. Uh, I'm going to look it up. Uh, uh, God damn it. What the fuck is his name? Uh, it is Ray Fisher as uh, Cyborg. Uh, I don't know about him, but I know Ezra Miller's still the Flash. 
Uh, Gal Gadot is still uh, Wonder Woman, and Jason Momoa is still Aquaman. Um, but they're in a situation where it's like the DCEU is trying to continue without Superman or Batman. Right. They have to have a new Superman or a Batman. So, like, they almost have to soft reset what they want to do, which completely – because the, uh, the Snyder well, Cut ends on a cliffhanger. <laughs> it ends teasing what's next. Like, it's not like a super hard cliffhanger, but it ends with a tease for what's coming next because the movie's about Steppenwolf, but Darkseid is above Steppenwolf, and it teases this whole idea that – Dark side comes in, Lois Lane's gonna die, Superman's gonna turn evil, and it's gonna be like a mix between Dark Side and Injustice uh, at the same time. And like, it teases that super hard. Going back to Batman versus Superman, it teases it. And so, like, it's teasing the stuff that's just never gonna happen because Zack Snyder's out of the DCEU. But after watching the Snyder cut and seeing how much better he got as he went and how, like, he listened to what people wanted from Batman and Superman and from these movies, and he got better about it. And, and you know, the only movie that does have this massive collateral damage where all these innocent people are dying is Man of Steel. And then he gets better. And then Batman feels more like Batman. And, and, and there's character development for a lot of the, 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 the superheroes. And um, there's, like, decent comic relief. And the action's really good. It's like, I would have wanted to see Zack Snyder continue to improve with these DCEU movies and actually, like, get really good with them as they go. And it, 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 the other thing is, like, you know, the, obviously the DCEU does feel different right now from the MCU just because the DCEU has rated R movies, right? The Suicide Squad's rated R, so it does feel different. Um, but I think and in general, once, the tone is just darker, right? Even uh, like with just comparing like not Batman as and much Superman in and, Phase uh, Two of the DC. Oh uh, no, I'm sure, I'm sure, right? But uh, and that's what I was getting is like Phase Two of the DCEU feels much more like the MCU, except for the fact that it has some R-rated movies. Um, but Zack Snyder's felt very different from the MCU, and I would have almost now. The the problem is. His Justice League, if it, if he was the one who released it in theaters, it never would have been the Snyder Cut. It would not have been a four-hour-long movie, right? No, yeah. Stuff would have been trimmed, and I don't think it would have been as good. Um, now, if he had turned it into two movies, maybe we could have gotten something. Uh, or if, you know, he had been allowed to make a four-hour movie. But I think, like, the saddest part about the Snyder Cut is that I actually think it's so good and that, like, we'll never get a continuation of this version, you know? Um, Unless, like you know wb like because wb made the snyder cut happen right like is yeah it maybe so maybe it wouldn't be impossible for there to be two continuities maybe, like superheroes do weird multiverse shit see, maybe I, they can figure something out like i don't see like it as impossible that, though, just unlikely they just happened to release it just because it was already like a thing and like already mostly edited and stuff like i heard uh, like, they heard spent 70 like, million dollars on it Oh, okay. I I guess I'll that's what I mean that. about like how I don't see it as necessarily impossible because it's like they did so much to make right. the Snyder Cut happen. He would just he with, would just like, have to sign back on. They would they would have to ask him to come back, which I don't know if they would, and then he would have to convince Ben Affleck and Henry Cavill to come back. Yeah. Uh, right. So it's it, yeah, it's like a shot in the dark, but uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe we can dream. Um, so. Uh, okay, cool. Did you have any more to say, or? Uh... Um, no. I mean, I I don't have any more to say because any more I have to say, I I think I want to make some videos about the DCU because it's so oh. interesting to talk about. It's so interesting to talk about. It's like, dude, oh my god, it's like, it's so good actually. <laughs> cool. Um, so it sounds like it's my turn. So I read a manga it was uh the drifting classroom which i completely and totally only read because of sunny boy and because sunny boy referenced it in the first episode and i was like oh this is a famous manga i should i should maybe check this out uh <laughs> uh Sounds i didn't like expect it to be as brutal it. as it was or what oh okay i guess it sounded like you weren't gonna be into it how you're talking about it oh no i like i liked it um it's like uh, so basically, yeah, the premise is that a elementary school with about 800 students and the faculty gets teleported to a, you know, giant desert wasteland. And I will spoil uh, the basic idea of where that what that wasteland is, because I think that's more interesting than just leaving it as a mystery. Um, and I guess to make a comparison to Sunny Boy and or like because we mentioned Lord of the Flies on, on the seasonal discussion and uh from what i've never read lord of the flies but i do know that it's like basically like, the whole point is that uh, without society humans will just become animals and generally speaking in crisis situations reality has shown the opposite in that people will just generally help each other like i do remember seeing an article 
uh, within the last couple of years ago about, yeah, some students got stranded on an island and they just, like, helped each other and they didn't devolve into, like, someone dying or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Drifting Classroom doesn't take that route at all. It is one of the most brutal manga I can remember reading, especially even just in, sh- like, in, in general, uh, let alone, like, this is a shonen manga. This ran in Shonen Sunday and it is insanely violent and dark and just brutal. Like, uh, they're elementary school kids, and a lot of them just fucking die. Uh, like, it doesn't really pull any punches. Uh, <laughs> um, you have first graders committing suicide by jumping off of buildings. Uh, they're, you know, kids are killing each other. Adults are killing kids. Kids are killing adults. Uh, it just, it, it's just, it, and it doesn't really stop either. Like, it's only 11 volumes, but it just kind of keeps getting worse. Uh, they have to deal with an outbreak of the bubonic plague. Uh, they have to deal with food and water uh, crises because there's just not enough. They're there for so long that, you know, the, what was left at the school just doesn't, you know, it can't last for as many mouths as there are to feed. Um, there's, you know, infighting and insurrections and leadership quarrels. And um, it's just, it's just constantly like really brutal. And, it, it, you know, don't, read it unless you are want something that'll just like hurt you um i mean that said i can also understand if like it doesn't do anything for you because uh it's just like i guess some things about the art style like i can see if, if someone was laughing at some certain parts i wouldn't uh put I, i'd be like yeah that makes sense um i'm definitely glad i read it because it's one of those series that's like really important and uh people don't recognize the references to it because they don't, they haven't, uh, you know, experienced it, right? Or it's just not as well known. Um, to which I give an example. Um, come on. Every masterpiece has its cheap copy. Um, <laughs> cause I, I remember, oh. uh, yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> that's that specific, like, scared face, like, with the, the, the lines around the mouth and the, the detail on the eyes. Yeah, it's Drifting Classroom. <laughs> um, and I... I <laughs> I literally went through like a dozen Roboco chapters because I was like, I remember it. I remember seeing it. Um, and here's another one I remembered later. It's like, this I'm is just so a classroom. I'm glad Crashdorf puts, ed- puts effort into the, the weeb club. <laughs> and this is another one I remembered of a Danganronpa sprite where it's also the drifting classroom face of just uh, really fucking terrified. And I guess like that's the thing is uh, another thing I've noted about it for me is that it's a horror manga or it's considered a horror manga. But, like, I think why it worked for me... I guess there were some moments that I was spooked at, but it's, like, the horror isn't, like, some supernatural shit happening. It is, like, the horror is uh, these people you know and where literally your classmates might fucking kill you. Or you might just die and starve to death in a fucking desert wasteland. Um, by the way, the desert wasteland... Or, nah, I don't need to spoil it. I feel like I've already talked about the manga enough. Uh, but, yeah, it, I, I, I enjoyed it. Uh, the ending was good. Um, like I said, it's mostly just emotionally really brutal and it doesn't let up at all. So if that's not your kind of thing, then, you know, uh, pass. But, you know, it's also, yeah, it's uh, like the author, like this manga started in the 70s and the author is basically called like the godfather of horror manga. So if you're wondering like why it's important. Um, so, uh, yeah. And, uh, I liked it. It was good. Epic. Yeah. So uh, I guess that about calls it for the episode. So, uh... Thank you for listening, and uh, we will see you next time. Yeah. Uh, adios. Adios.